So guys, uh, how many ships has it been that we've uh, found and crashed? <laughs> well, I mean, it's hard to say. Is the thing that we're in in this episode a ship? What is the definition of an arc? We're at, we're at the second act of this arc, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, we're at the end of the freezer arc. Yeah. This is the <laughs> All of this. No, the freezer arc was uh, chapter two, right? With the uh, the the lake that was frozen. That's chapter crystal? three. Yeah, oh, okay. nice. I get him confused too. <laughs> We've been on this game since fucking July, and it blows my mind. I went back and looked, and I was like, "That can't be right." It's still only been two weeks for these people. <laughs> I'm actually all surprised how quickly it's going. Like we're at yeah yeah chapter ten out of thirteen, but things are getting ready to get really. Wait, there are thirteen sticky. chapters. Yeah, there's 13. Yeah. I thought someone said there was 14 or something. There's technically 12. I think 13 is like only like post game stuff. Post game. Oh, okay, cool. Because I, well, I thought someone was saying 12. And I was just like, this game throws fucking 13 in our face so much. Yeah. yeah. Like, why the fuck didn't they just do 13 chapters? So it's it's good to know that there's actually just 13 chapters. And this December is this game's 13th birthday. Get out! Not really. Dude, how do we keep accident? Oh, like, wow. we keep fucking, like, dropping our pants and tumbling, like, f- tripping over it and somehow, like, landing in a <laughs> pile of gold. With I, these every Final time, Fantasy every like, time. It, it, it works out so well. I feel like we did something similar for Dirge of Cerberus and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was like right when like they started introducing more of the extended universe into the remake yeah, shit. Yeah, it's yeah. Incredible. Like, oh, hey, Nero's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How weird. <laughs> Challenge anyway. approaching. Nero uh, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> now there is an ancient. Uh, there's an ancient Grand Pulsian legend that says that I am Curtis and this is the every F and FF podcast and with I me as always. I, yeah, I think I've heard that legend and it says that I am Carl Germ and again, this is the every F and FF podcast <laughs> with me as always. is. My name is Alex and I don't think the legends say anything about me. <laughs> it's a, it's in the data the logs. Analects. Yeah, it's, it's really like buried deep in the in the data logs and the liner notes of the podcast. Yeah, you have to you have to, read that, <laughs> you have to read that one. You have to read that one and then press R to go to the second page. If you yeah. just back out, you miss the part about Alex. Yeah, I think actually Alexander shows up maybe next chapter. I could be wrong. He does. Ooh, interesting. I but know um, that guy from previous games. <laughs> I know. Hey, I know that guy <laughs> from the stories. <laughs> when last we left our intrepid heroes, they uh, had disappeared. They fucking got zooted. They're not. <laughs> That's not what that means. Anyway, yeah the uh, the the ship that we were in, flying away from the Palamasia, uh, disappeared right as it was getting ready to smash into a building. Right. Yeah, they got hit with one point two one gigawatts and got transported somewhere. <laughs> So yeah, that's right. It reached 88 miles an hour. <laughs> Our Uber driver almost went directly into like a building and then so it just dropped us off in a really shady area that we now have to fucking fight our way out of. <laughs> oh, you can drop me off here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can just drop me off wherever. It's fine. I can walk for the rest of the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, this game is constantly good at like not telling us. I think maybe just <laughs> I'm by part of it wondering it like because of the first like game on this console like yeah we can't afford to just show every single time they go into a new area like they're just gonna we're just gonna render the new area <laughs> because as we start this new section we see this ship nicely parked in basically a, a subway station the ship is parked in this subway station so like yeah the, the ship has appeared in a uh, like, do we crash in here no because there's no holes like in the ceiling or anything there's no it. way for it to leave it's so like. It's a really impressive park job. It's like if you somehow were able to double park between like four different pillars in a subway station <laughs> perfectly. Yeah, yeah. And like, you're, I don't know how, how many K turns you have to do in order to get out of this shit. It's, but, uh, it's like you'd have to build the vehicle in between the pillars. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it's it looks like. Reverse Johnny Cash song where you got to take it one piece at a time. To, to <laughs> <laughs> Your dad like gets his fixer upper finally up and built, but now he can't get it out of the garage because. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He built it facing the wrong direction. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, I got to tear it back down. It's the Homer Simpson car that's just tires glued to a uh, mattress. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Bartandalus just no clipped us into a, a subway station. <laughs> yeah. At very first, like, we don't know where we are at all, right? But the the architecture isn't so different that we suspect anything is wrong. We're bl- we're like, oh, we're just we're just below the town, right? Like no yeah. big deal. 
Yeah, um, Vanille kind of just <clears throat> comments on it saying like, oh, this looks like a piece of pulse. Right, right. And like, Which makes sense because there is um, like scripts and like numbers and stuff on the wall. That is not yeah. uh, cocoon text. It is actually pulsing and like script, which oh, we saw before on the uh, Anima's chamber as well. It's a very, kind of, oh. very rounded at first as cocoons, which is very angular. Yeah, oh, really? and, and Saz is talking that. about this, and he's like, Pulse, like, you mean, like, the, the vestige? Like, something that close, this close, or something like that, this close to Eden? And it's like, yeah, right, like, it's right. a little sus. So, yeah, maybe um, they recognize that we were flying through Eden in the last scene. Right. I probably assume we're not far from there. Oh, yeah, I guess, did we get a confirmation that that was Eden? Um, I mean, I suspect because we were in the middle of... It's, uh, there's only one flying city I know of right now. <laughs> yeah. There's only one flying city I know of and the thing that Saz just said where he's like, oh, this thing below Eden. So I'm like, going to be honest with you guys. I haven't been doing my homework too well in the in the data log department. Uh, these <laughs> oh, have been Carl. Long, oh, Carl. long and, and kind of trying sections. So like by the time I've gotten to the end of them where I usually be like, all right, data log roundup, let's go. I've just been like... Oh, just- just wait for the next one. Ooh. Yeah, I, gotta, <laughs> I, I think got chapter some... eleven. We're gonna have to have like five episodes for it. <laughs> this is uh, this is like the uh, the Wani Kani reviews just like piling up. I'm looking at my data log and I'm like, oh my god, I have seven hundred that I need to do. Oh, no. <laughs> oh yeah. So the uh, recap slash an event data log. The last paragraph in the last thing is so if you're booting up right after you did the autosave, it would have said uh, their craft is guided to by an unseen power that protects them from Roche's onslaught and flies them towards the reality hidden beneath the capital of Cocoon, as we know as Eden. Okay, uh, good. All right, cool. There it is. That that, that good confirmation. Um, yeah, Fang's kind of talking about it, and she says, like, yeah, well, what I don't understand is after the purge and all that Lassie paranoia, why keep a chunk of pulse under the floorboards? I really like that, like, yeah. <laughs> way of describing it. It's like the, the, the beating of that hideous heart. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, the the Lassie kind of like they consider like what this could mean. Hope wonders if like Dysley has sent them here on purpose. Um, Saz is like, yeah, he probably does. I mean, he he basically explained our entire focus up straight up, right? Yeah, he says, "Here's your focus on a silver platter." And yeah. Hope's wondering, <laughs> like, do you really think that like what our focus is is what Dysley was saying it is? Which is a very good question, right? And uh, and Vanil says what we were talking about last time. Where, like, why would a cocoon falci want to destroy cocoon? Like, why is it working with the pulse falci? Wouldn't it want the opposite of that? Yeah. And Hope says, he's like, oh, maybe it's a falci thing. It's probably this grand design and we just can't understand it. Yeah, man. I do, <laughs> yeah, I do yeah, like yeah, Hope's yeah, weirdly religious thing of just being like, well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> that's why all the tragedy that's happened in your life is actually a good thing somehow. It's like, uh, okay. Hope really uh, steps up this chapter, kind of just like really kind of leading the conversation. Yeah, it's, it's true. Kinda, it's kind of cool. Good for yeah. him. Yeah. But yeah, and then... uh during all this yeah snow is off just sulking in the corner snow right is now. off he's just like leaning against a uh, a pillar and just kind of like looking real bad real real deflated dude's not having a good day because he has just learned what sarah's focus was uh mm -hmm. which was to bring together the implements to destroy cocoon which he has insisted since the beginning was the opposite of the case but he's just never like stopped to think about it or consider that it could be something else. So having been told, he's a he's a little deflated. Yeah, early in the conversation, Vanille's like, "Mr. Hero, cocoon calling snow." Like, Earth yeah, to yeah. snow is Earth, so it's just cocoon to snow. And then yeah, at this point, Fang even says, "She's like, hey, snow, nothing from you," and he still doesn't say anything. It's like, hey, asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. We're yeah, having a conversation we <laughs> here. Anything from me? This is like, yeah, when I'm falling asleep in class or whatever, and the teacher calls on me, but. Uh, Snow is unthwarted. He's still deep in thunk. Yeah. yeah. Anytime someone describes like a, a bout of like depression as a funk, I just think of uh, Max Scoville of uh, IGN who had a podcast called The Comedy Button. And anytime like someone would say that, he would be like, "Why do white people always ruin the the word funk? Like say, <laughs> much, say anything else. Like stop making funk a bad thing." <laughs> <laughs> Some stank on it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we just kind of, uh, start wandering around because right now we're there's kind of There's a just, nice little, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. This is kind of like an in-between section. We're not really like in a random encounter section. This is kind of like, this is similar to when we were like on the, uh, 
the Hind- not the Hindenburg. Hindenburg. Oh, the, the Lindblom. Um, Lind- not the Hindenburg. The Lindblom. <laughs> oh no! Very, yeah, very different. Uh, we were yeah, we were on the Lynn Bloom. It's kind of just like here's an area to kind of like catch up with everyone before you continue on with the story. Right, right. A lot of like optional dialogue, which is pretty good. Um, yeah. This is also where you get the trophy Instrument of Truth. Ooh. Which is of course one of the best T Square songs. Yeah, oh, indeed. Which is interesting. Like that, I I don't know how much. You know, I feel like all of the names of the trophies have been very story specific and it's like instrument mm-hmm. of truth. And it's like, OK, so the game is kind of telling us that the the we are hearing the truth, although I do have my doubts. Like, you know, I find it hard to believe that, like, just all of a sudden it's like, oh, here's here's the actual focus. And it's like the worst thing you could imagine. Have fun. Yeah. From like the most evil guy we've met so far. Well, I think that's what I, one of the things I like about FF13 so much as a like like theming and plotting and stuff like that is like, what do you do in the face of only defeat, right? Like when there yeah. is no way to win and everything is just bad, like that's when your character is tested. And I kind of I think that's like a, a cool thing that this game does. It makes it very dark, but it's a neat way to look at these characters. I think. We, we must imagine Sisyphus as happy, <laughs> as content. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't think many of the characters have anything besides just kind of reminding us, like, what has happened. Like, yeah, yeah. if you talk to Snow, he's just still talking to himself like, Sarah, so gathering up the tools for destruction turned you to crystal, huh? I had it all wrong, totally wrong, like, or whatever. You really were yeah. an enemy of Cocoon. Uh, yeah. Fang was like, been checking your brand? If you start to stray or take too much of a shock, your brand will change you. Next, oh. next stop, see Central. I wanted to talk about that, actually. Um, I don't. I haven't been checking the entire time, but you know how like Fang explained that like as your brand goes, like an eye will open up in the middle of it or whatever. This and, like, whole chapter, mm-hmm. yeah. I this noticed. whole chapter, I noticed on Snow's brand, the eye is open on his brand. He's like same as Saz. He has a uh, Saz yeah. too. The red starting to show on everyone. I noticed that Saz had it uh, at some point in a cutscene recently. I think you could see like the red mark from just the limited amount that we get to see on his brand. Yeah, they're like they're getting toward the end of the uh, the amount of time that they have. It's almost seeth o'clock, baby. It's almost seeth o'clock, indeed. It's seeth time somewhere. Cracks open. <laughs> I ordered this book the other day, but here is a screenshot from it where it actually shows you exactly how far everyone's brand progresses throughout I, the game. I have this saved in my phone. I didn't know when I wanted to bring it up. <laughs> oh, it's so but cool. It, it's cool. I mean, don't look too far ahead because I'm sure there's... Uh, oh, yeah, cool. It's labeled by chapter. So do not read below chapter 10. Yeah, yeah. I actually found this out also like going through the texture files. There are textures for like, every single... There's 13 stages, of course, of the Seath brand. Of course. Surprise, surprise. I need to ask our buddy Adam. I guess I might want to wait until after uh, this season, but our buddy Adam, uh, Cloud7470, uh, has, I think, Snow's brand on his arm. Oh, um, oh, as a nice. tattoo, which is super sick. That, that's super uh, cool. So I'm wondering yeah. which permutation of the brand it is, but it, it could also be that's something cool. that, you know. Um, yeah, so uh, so yeah, after this little section where we kind of talk to all of our party members and kind of fumble around for a second, we can continue on. And as we leave this um, this little foyer and start heading down one of the tunnels, we get a little cutscene, right? Where yeah. uh, S- Snow kind of comes up to Lightning and he's like, hey, I feel like I need to apologize. I was I was entirely wrong about all this stuff. And Lightning's like really gentle with him in this scene where she's like, oh, wrong about Sarah's focus? Eh, you know, d- don't worry about it. It's not like you to second guess yourself. No big deal, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um... Everyone's been real uh, easy on each other since... Uh Palampolum, I think everyone's been kind of yeah. yeah everyone's gotten yeah. a lot softer. We're, we're we're all seen eye to eye. We've yeah, all had a yeah. nice big heart to heart. It's it's hard to heart to heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I do hate what Snow says when she's like, "It's not like you to second guess yourself." He's like, "Yeah, well, even heroes make mistakes." I'm like, "All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've defended you so much. Knock it off with the the hero shit, dude." <laughs> Snow, you're posting well, I, cringe. I, I, it's funny, like light acts like she's kind of giving him a hard time sort of you know where she's like yeah you really did mess up you big dumb idiot but Mm -hmm. the fact that you believe so hard is what got me out of my rut so like we'll consider it even you know what i mean she even says to him you've been a total idiot but it saved me and so like so that's base you know either way your faith in sarah was strong that strength got you this far it was all wrong yeah You tried so hard to convince us that you even fooled yourself. (laughs) You've been a total idiot. But still, 
It saved me. Yeah, you tried so hard to convince us that you even fooled yourself, which yeah, yeah. is an interesting interpretation of that. My yeah. interpretation yeah. is that just that, you know, like, if we are to believe Dicely, it's just like, oh, yeah, this dude's just too dumb to... Like, Dicely said the same thing to him. He's like, oh, like, did it really never occur to you, or were you too, like... And it's like, I think it literally maybe never occurred to him that yeah, he wasn't it, yeah. 100% mm -hmm. correct, and that his, <laughs> his wife wasn't saving the world, and he was going to help her save it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so Lightning walks away from him, and he kind of, like, holds the, uh, Sarah's tear and says, Sarah, talk to me, baby. And, <laughs> like, talking to the tear. Talk Light to me, baby. Lightning does encourage him a little bit, too, even though she's like, yeah, everything you know is a lie, but fuck it, is what she's basically saying. Because she says, <laughs> yeah, like, you yeah. trusted Sarah. Let that faith drive you. It even made me want to believe. And it's like, that's that's right. a powerful thing, you know. It's, it's interesting, too, in this game that's about, you know, killing gods, essentially. And just the, the premise of, like, yeah, have faith and it will, will drive you to, like, what you need to do. And, and, like, what you in your heart, like, want to be true. And right, right. the faith here isn't, like, faith in, like, the grand plan of fate of the gods that are put... The, they're putting it in front of us and stuff. It's like, no, just have faith in like your own morals and your own beliefs. Yeah. Yeah, man. Be true to yourself or whatever. <laughs> wait, oh, wait, whatever and stuff. But, um, but yeah, there's a couple little like tunnels and some other little, uh, like stations that we kind of like run through real quick. There's not too much there. Oh, uh, still on the uh, topic of Fang and Brands. Um, yeah. As I was extracting uh, uh, subtitle files, I found a deleted scene that's only available, I think, in, the, in Japanese files. But uh, ah. our friend Corey pointed out, because as we know, Fang has been kind of having some uh, brand aches. Yeah. yeah. So she, when she mentioned Ragnarok last uh, chapter. My brand, my special brand. <laughs> <laughs> the achy, achy breaky brand. <laughs> And this is information that's not in the Japanese version game. It's just in the files. It's only in the files. So, like, there are subtitle files in every uh, in every chapter that are triggered. And because of the order of where this is, I'm assuming this is kind of early on, kind of as foreshadowing to further reinforce that, like, yeah, something's wrong with Fang. Yeah. Um, and I also feel like there's just a lot of cut content in this, this section of the game anyway, because there's just a lot of, like, stuff they can get through. Um, basically, like, uh, there's a, a point where uh, I think Fang's, like, being suspiciously kind of weird still. And, uh, like, Vanilla's like, what's wrong? Not feeling good? And, like, Fang's more like, more like I'm going crazy and lightning like referring to snow is like, yeah, well, I'd also get worn down trying to like keep up with this guy over here. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's like, I'm used to things being so loud. Like, that's why I'm also like nervous because I think she's like used to like chaos. So that's like why she's more concerned with like why her health has been falling. Like, yeah, I usually can handle shit. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And lightning is like, oh, do you want to like break off or like take a break? And like, oh, no, no, like Vanille's here to take care of me. I'm glad I met you guys, basically. And it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Awesome. Sweet. That is an interesting scene because that does do a good. Yeah, I almost feel like that should have stayed in. Maybe not. I don't know. But like, yeah. it is and that who nice knows why to, they cut it or, you know, it, yeah. it could just be a thing. Too. These last two chapters, I feel like they were just like cutting things out to kind of speed things up in the middle. Maybe because so. Yeah. The thing with games is like, I noticed with a lot of like JRPGs, like they have a mid the beginning, middle, and end like really like ironed out and they're like deciding what to prioritize when they're kind of connecting all those like beats yeah, yeah um so there's obviously stuff that they're gonna prioritize over others things and they probably just like well we didn't want to animate this or we didn't want to have this section of the game be so long so we're just gonna like yeah. chop it up and whatever yeah even taken out that i still like that that scene does kind of like make me pay more attention to how fang is dealing with everything and like how she is being kind of affected differently from the cast so that's pretty interesting Vanille still also hasn't told her like that she has the whole, the, the, they haven't had their conversation yet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's, there's still like uh, I feel bad for Fang now because she's she seems like the most like the outsider still. I feel like yeah, now yeah. would be a really good time for Vanille to kind of lay that on us because it's like that we're, <laughs> we're all, all doing these, the healing and stuff. Yeah, we we have all these questions and shit. And we're just like, oh, we don't know what our focus is, and Dicely just told us exactly what our focus is, but it seems like counterproductive to what we thought it was and what Sarah said it was. Yeah. And Fang might just be like, oh yeah, no, my focus is like, I don't know, like I'm gonna turn into Ragnarok or something and kill everyone or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. like who knows? I mean, I'm sure a lot of people listening know and. <laughs> I do not. Um, I don't. I don't know if what I said is like anywhere near. That's what it feels like they're hinting at, foreshadowing. Like, yeah, 
But uh, yeah, so uh, after we kind of walk through this area at some point, we uh, we hit some stairs that we ascend a little bit and we come out into a much larger open area, right? Much There's, what feels more like a vestigy type of area because... Yeah, sure. Yeah. If we're like in this, like we're coming up from the subway tunnels, which I'm assuming connect different parts of this facility and probably. Yeah. And you know, a facility is a great way to put this because it looks factory ish. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it almost looks. Is this I just mean, deep ground again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just deep ground again. Exactly. Yeah. Like if you look, there's like a, a, a shot just kind of showing us like the area and we can't see beyond some like larger walls that have stairways going up to them. But in the distance, you can actually kind of see. Um, very much like the uh, the deep ground or the uh, whatever the fuck Reeves organization is called, I forget. Um, just like uh, like balconies and like it looks like like there's like railings and stuff that like almost looks like an office space, like kind of up up in the distance. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah. catwalks, piping. Uh, I mean, the power's on. We're we're like in some sort of old pulse facility, but like the power's running, which I'm assuming it's just because there's like a foul sea on a hamster wheel in the basement. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's how all this works, right? Well, as we see it, uh, Hope says, I can't I can't believe we're still in Cocoon. And Saz is like, oh, it's kind of creepy. And then as they're talking to each other, I don't know how you would explain it. Some like uh, pods open. Yeah, everyone's brands start burning though too. First, yeah, it's true. Yeah, everything is like glowing red, and we're like, oh, is everyone just gonna get idolins now? Like whatever. Yeah, everyone cool. gets idolins like, and or turns into a seath. <laughs> we have to fight five idolins at the same time. <laughs> oh my god, what a nightmare! Oh, I see. I, I'm looking back at the. I'm looking back at the footage right now. Actually, the ground below them shines a giant brand below them. Oh, for just like a second. Yeah. A glyph that maybe like they trip something. Yeah, um, yeah. Because they are all pulse let's see, that would make sense that for some reason this place would react to them. Right. But there's these like pods that these like columns that look like have like mounted pods or openings on them. They have sin spawn on them on the sides. <laughs> They're basically little tiny like I almost want to call them like baby little baby coffins or vestiges because out <laughs> from them they, like a little door flips open and some of for the for sale um, baby coffin never used. <laughs> <laughs> it start. It's kind of Geiger esque looking in its design. I was gonna say yeah, yeah. Geiger esque. Is the kind of rounded and very organic, even though everything else in this facility is very like square and angular, um, yeah. and kind of steampunkish. But from the bot- base of the pillars, uh, a new version of the pulse work uh, soldiers come waltzing out. Yeah, shiny new color. Yeah, they got big heads. They got bigger claws. The yeah, pulse, these are the pulse work, work knights. knights. Yes. Oh. Oh, the pulse work days, but oh, those pulse work <laughs> knights. Yeah. They got hammerheads. They're kind of cool. They do. they do. Oh yeah, shit! I didn't even really realize that. But we get into a fight with them, um, and after we beat them, importantly, some real crazy shit goes down as far as like leveling up in this game. Yeah, and I think oh, right. I think as oh, that's true. Uh, when we say we get into a fight with them, the team is Snow, Vanille, and Lightning, which wasn't my team when we last left off. So I think this is just a, like a mandatory wait. Was it one Snow, that- Vanille, and Lightning? Interesting. The one they uh the one I'm watching right now is Lightning, Hope, and Fang. Oh, weird. Yeah. Yeah, mine was Snow, Lightning, and Vanille. Maybe that's like a relationship, uh a relationship uh-huh. like calculation that's going on. The, my PlayStation 3 was able to just read my mind and it's like, you really like lightning, you like vanille, and you like yeah. <laughs> Maybe because of what Curse is about to say. Yeah. There maybe has something to do with like how you progress to each of these characters. It's just kind of like, all right, we're gonna pick these guys because they I don't know, these maybe I changed are- my party beforehand or something i was saying because i did not have snow in my party last chapter <clears throat> yeah i, I didn't sure. either oh, okay. interesting i think because yeah, the last thing we did was fuck up uh bartandalus yeah and then we got Weird. hella cutscenes. hella cut hellacious cutscenes. giga cutscenes. but at the end of this battle oh, we man. get this, this is horrifying by the way <laughs> horrifying role development unlocked yeah role development unlocked and it, from now on Every character has all six roles. They yeah, can do any which of them. sounds fucking dope. Until you realize the implications of what that means. Well, because like, the it, way it, it works, you don't actually unlock. Like it has the sphere grid essentially unlocked for that those roles. You still have to use uh, Christogen points to level up, and you need to get 
at least one move or like one ability in that uh, Crystarium in order to unlock that role for the thing. So you can do what I did where you just dump all the Christogen points into a role that was just unlocked for a character and still not oh, get the no. role because you didn't actually get uh, like... I, yeah, no. So starting out, I think the cheapest one. you have ones, to get it to level one? You yeah. have to get it to the first uh, ability. No, okay. Yeah. I didn't touch any of the new ones at all because the cheapest one is 4,000 Christogen points. Mm -hmm. And I think my most expensive one on one of the rolls I already had was like 2,000. So I said, fuck those rolls. I don't need those rolls. I'm I got not learn so them. excited. I was like a kid with candy and I was like, I fucking love candy. I'm going to eat it all right now. And then I gave myself a tummy ache because it was just like <laughs> not worth the points that I expended. And I was like, well, shit, that was probably the wrong move. Like, I think what the game is sort of telling you to, to do with this Don't is spend like... spend it all in one place. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of focus on what finishing your roles that you're already in, and then when you have extra points, start d dabbling in the other ones. But um, yeah, yeah, I did not now, do that for like three characters. <laughs> I'm still very much like making sure my people have a specialty and like I'm not going to like dip into the other trees until I'm like... I have some surplus. This, That's this the thing, basically right? feels like um, if you were playing Final Fantasy X and you just dropped everyone all at once into Kamari's tree, and then it's like, hey, just go whatever direction you want. And you're like, oh, shit. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, I was so yeah. close to getting a good move with Titus, and now I need to, like... Uh, it, so, what I think is kind of interesting about it, right, is that um, you're... I feel like your party members are strongest in the roles that they kind of currently have. That's kind of their specialty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is really interesting to look through the other ones. So, like, I looked through Vanille's uh, Sentinel role, right? Because I was like, Sentinel role? Haha, <laughs> that's so funny for Vanille to have Sentinel. Why would she have Sentinel? And all of her, like, skills in Sentinel are, like, evade and like oh. magic avoiding and uh the healing ones she's kind of a lightweight nice. like nimble like a very nimble sentinel where like she pulls all the effects it, toward her and then they miss instead of like her just tanking the damage that's and so I was sick. like that's so interesting it, it shows how much love and care went into this battle system and just like you know, it's not just like, oh, you can unlock Ultima if you want to, like, early on or whatever, yeah, and then make yeah. this this person good in this role or, or whatever. It's like, no, like, they're still very precise about being like, well, this is a role that every character can have, but they're all going to have their own little spin on it, which we've already kind yeah, of seen yeah. with certain ones. Like, even something as simple as, like, Ravager, where it's like, oh, well, the first thing that, like, lightning gets is the lightning magic, or snow gets the, the blizzard magic, and things of that nature. Snow they kind of snow have been magic. Hinting, snow magic. Um, <laughs> kind of just been... Uh, snow gets the lightning, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like that, uh, yeah, because a few chapters ago, we were like, oh, yeah, these, like, new roles kind of, like, fit where these characters are, like, mentally, and they're story and so it makes sense that like they would pay attention to kind of even how those roles are like dished out for each of these characters yeah right instead of just everyone having the same tree or same sphere grid or whatever it's like not like in 10 where you can just like i'm gonna hop over to orange grid and like do whatever right, he would right. be doing but just as titus now but no it's like everyone's everyone's tree is different which is pretty cool yeah so like i'm sure if you thing. max it out everyone might have like the same moves by the end of it but it's like very much on a path so there's yeah. definitely like kind I, of an optimal i way think to... they're a little different actually if i yeah. remember right, i could be wrong but i think even, they are even different cooler, if, if even cooler, i'm right. sure there's some like yeah like some kind of uh balancing that goes into um everything also so whenever i get a new crystarium area to like start like oh would you call it a new crystarium level i Crystaria. guess a new Crystaria. A new branch. A new... A new branch, yeah. I guess... Yeah, what do they call it? Like, expansion? I always... The first thing I always do is see what's there. Because I always go for the abilities first, and then I just get everything later or whatever. I mop up all the, um, like, HP plus and magic plus later. I just go abilities first. That's what I want. That's smart. So I was looking at it, and now there's an extra thing there that wasn't there before. Because before there were abilities... HP, MP nodes, blah, blah, blah. Accessory sometimes. Mm -hmm. And now there's one in each person's like best skill called ATB level, which gives you another ATB level. Another bar? Yeah, you get another ATB bar for everybody Holy by shit. learning it. 
Um, everybody's is pretty far along. Like it, it took me all the way to the end of this chapter to get those for each character, but I just made a beeline for them. It's like almost at level four and some it's, of these. It's but. almost all the way at the end, except for Vanille's, which is the very, very first thing that she can get. So like all my characters have their four ATB except for Vanille, who has five now. Ah. So that's kind of cool. Speaking of ATB bars and like uh, chaining attacks, I accidentally found out. I have no idea if you guys mentioned this, and I just zoned out. But if I hit triangle or whatever the top button is, you can actually like instantly do the moves that are queued up and just chop off whichever ones they didn't hit yet. Really? So if you're like, okay, I don't want to wait till my entire ATB bar goes up to have a uh, lightning or whoever do a move. Yeah, we only need one more hit. Hit triangle. Yeah. I think that is in the tutorial as well, um, and that is heavily used in uh, the speed run because the fights are are very optimized. You don't have to wait with... for the whole bar to fill up. You can just hit triangle mm-hmm. and do like whatever's mm-hmm. filled up. We'll just use it now. Can... Yeah, exactly. So you can. Yeah, it, it's it's really a nice feature. It it adds a little bit more depth to the to the run. Yeah, that reminds me of um, when I first got four bars with Saz, and I was just doing like ca- casting like the two ATB abilities two in a row so it was like okay i'm gonna p- put faith on saz twice and then it got to him and now uh, or like bravery or whatever and then i was like and now i'm gonna do faith on vanille <laughs> and, stuff. and it was just like i was cutting my shit in half because it was like oh no i could have done faith and bravery in the same turn and then did the same thing to vanille and like optimized it that way but i'm an idiot so i didn't mm-hmm. do that <laughs> yeah that could help you just kind of spit off what you need real fast mm-hmm. and not have to wait for just like redundant commands to happen or whatever especially if you're just like you can select targets or whatever we also get a title card here after uh this whole new world is opened up to us and we are indeed the fifth arc the concealed vestige Ooh! in the distance it looks like there's like a weird tripod like uh thing that looks like maybe came out of like half-life or whatever has like a cannon on it but yeah it looks like we're just in a big old factory i'm trying to look because i can't I, i feel like i need to fucking start up ff13 now and see if Vanille has five or four. Because I haven't played as Vanille. Do you want me to do it? Because I, I can do that um, from my... Is that your Steam Deck? <laughs> no, I yeah, wish. But... I, I'm still in Chapter 1 on my Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, good point. But I mean, I can I can probably pull it up here. It's not a big deal. It's not a huge deal or whatever. The point you is... also check during the break. Okay, yeah, that's fine. We'll do it then. Because I, I remember Zwanzig pointing out that um, the first hint about them is that Vanille started with three ATB right. in our party, despite the fact that everyone else had two. And then there was that the whole thing. So, it, like, if you were really savvy and you were paying attention to all that and making note to it, you could be like, right. oh, it's interesting that Vanille has always had three. You just think it's like, right, oh, it's a right, gameplay right. thing. Like, whatever. I, you know. Yeah, yeah. I guess, like, since it, it was so odd when we played as Fang, who only had three, and I was so used to playing as, like, snow and lightning and hope and everybody or not hope it's like snow and lightning and i was like oh yeah everybody has four now and then it felt like a real step back to go back to three with fang and i was like oh my god how atrocious that's because Mm -hmm. yeah because the people who have idolins are like the party leaders for the most part yeah 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 so i kind of assumed fang was a step behind but maybe that's not the case yeah yeah but yeah she still has three vanille still has three until they probably get their idolins or yeah, you're probably whatever. Right. Or if you level them up in the Crystarium, So The point is, you should get uh, Vanille's ATB because it's almost free. <laughs> yeah, seriously. At the very beginning. It's free, free bar estate. The free real estate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fifth arc, though. That's, that's where we are. You're telling me an arc, there's five of these things? <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me a fifth made this arc? Um, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. <laughs> yeah, after this one, we come to the minor fall arc and then the, the major <laughs> lift arc. But Vanille says, this place, it must be an arc. Or she says, arc. Um, <laughs> it must be an arc. But Lightning says an arc <laughs> because we need someone with a normal accent. Normal accent. <laughs> normal accent, yeah. wow. Damn, dude, wow. strong. Strong. Putting, putting our Australian friends on blast. Damn. <laughs> hey, I'm the editor. I can say whatever I want. That's true. <laughs> you can make it sound like I said that. <laughs> um, yeah, but Fang says that's what they call it. Well them. said, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Long ago, the Falci who made their home on Grand Pulse were afraid of invasion from the outside. As part of their battle preparations, they created an army of living weapons. And they stored those weapons in arcs. And they hid the arcs all over the world. Everyone on Grand Pulse knew the legend. Most of us 
Never believed in him. So, this is basically a Pulse armory? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fang says most people on Pulse never really believed in this, um, but a few people had tried searching and never found them. Uh, who'd have thought to look on Cocoon? I- indeed, indeed. Which is funny, too, because that raises the question, like, I- I- assuming because, you know, Dicely just said, like, oh, yeah, no, our plan is for you guys to kill our Falci and shit, that the Sanctum would know about this, but there's also the thing of, like, the accidental bringing up things from Pulse... But that also raises yeah, the question: yeah. Was bringing the the vestige up accidental at all? Because yeah, kind exactly. Of yeah, like, that, that, I kind of take it that it probably wasn't. Yeah, but yeah, yeah like I, it, I it wonder, said. Ex- yeah. I think it said explicitly in the data logs, from the point of view of what we had learned at that moment. Yeah, um, right. That it was like, oh, who knows? Like, what horrors are in these things that we bring up from Pulse to build up our cities or whatever? And it's like, yeah. oh no, maybe this was all like intentional. Yeah. Um, but Fang also goes on to be like, oh, there's a, there's a more practical purpose to these as well. Or they say that there's a more practical purpose to it, right? Um, and that is to, like, train Lassie to become better killing machines, right? Yeah. She specifically says to force Lassie to master their shiny new powers, right? And mm-hmm. so, like, you're like, oh, I love okay, that this- they wrote in a canonical story reason to level grind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the, uh, they're trying to test our might and 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 challenge us to mortal combat so that we can have these shiny new powers. And it's like, oh, you say that right after you gave me a whole bunch of new shiny new powers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, everybody in the party has some version of like, oh, we'll become super fighting weapons. They all say something equally trite. Uh, uh, and then <laughs> I like that uh, Saz has yeah not teeth but monsters all the same yeah but Hope's all just like he's he's very uh, Hope's been very gun ho this whole chapter like think of it as a training for the fight ahead yeah and, and he's like Hope's right and then yeah like uh, once again uh, those pillars start busting again they start busting and uh, more like, pulse oh, work nights come out these guys again <laughs> how many times do we have to teach you this lesson old man Lightning says fun times <laughs> yeah fun times. Mazuina, and uh, but um, so the pulse the pulse knights are basically the same as the other pulse work soldiers, right? You stagger them, uh, their tops pop open, and then you take them out, right? No big deal. Little electric nougat you can go wailing on. Yeah, you hit their juicy, juicy cool. Yeah, they have a like, lot of strength. Like they do a lot of damage with their physical attack, and it has a wide berth. So like that is kind of the danger that they pose. I would say. But um, they are weak to the, yeah. That's actually they're weak to fire instead of the the last ones, which were not. I was excited about that because when I was controlling, uh, I think lightning, the first thing that I could select in the list when I was doing attacks was fire. So I was just like boom, 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 boom. Let, let, let's yeah, go, nice. melt them. Yeah, can alter own form. Interesting. I do like that the very first thing that happens once this cutscene is over because like the more knights have appeared behind us. Uh, if you have Vanille in the party, she'll go, oh, no, run. Like, like, oh, you need to get away super fast. Run for your life. And I was like, I think literally what she says. I was like, shut up. These are experience. I'm coming. I'm, I'm fighting these guys. I am not running away. Yeah. So I just immediately ran around and went toward them. But I thought it was very funny that she like kind of announced it like, oh, you shouldn't fight these guys. I, I need that CP. Have you seen how much these things cost now? Which uh, which party are you guys using here? Um, I'm still using uh, girl party. Yes, same girl party. Actually, maybe I, I think I switched to hope like later in this. Uh, I think chapter. I think I might actually sw- swap someone out. I might swap out. Um, I might swap out Fang for Saz because I feel like haste is gonna really, especially like with some of the stuff that Saz can do with buffing and yeah, with yeah. Vanille being able to use like imperil and stuff. I'm like that sounds like an extremely good team. Like it, it's mostly offense. With yeah. if I kept lightning in there because there's no sentinel really, but uh, I don't know. I think that would be a fun one to play around with, and also Saz is great. So at the moment, I really haven't been using Fang whenever I can kind of help it, just because not having access to Tri Disaster to me is just like <laughs> crippling. I'm like, no, I need to be able to stagger everything in one go around. Yeah. <laughs> Um, your other f- favorite friends here are... My favorite Bombuses. Yeah, they're Bombuses. Your Isohecahedrons? Yeah, yeah, they're Bombahedrons. Um, they are here. And they're, they're also... I now. actually think they're a little bit easier than the last bombs. 
Yeah, I was stronger. able to take them down before they, you know, do their their bullshit. But yeah, I think they're a called of, circuitrons. Yeah, circuitrons. at one point I think one of them did get me with like the self destruct, and it it definitely fucking sucked. But, uh, <laughs> they absorb electricity in this one instead of fire, so they're like electronic bombs. We're not really talking about the area too much because it is very repetitive. It's I was literally getting ready. Just to say. the same structure uh, over and over. It again. feels just, like deep ground. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of. I mean, it's, it reminds me of the inside of the vestige, but a little more uh, utilitarian and less uh, a little more brutalist, a little more. Uh, it, it's a fucking parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it kind of alternates in between. This is the party city after it's been uh, moved down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're already putting in the spirit Halloween shit. <laughs> uh, these like factory type areas, these like wider areas, and then like the more subway tunnels, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of goes back yeah. and forth between the two for a while. Um, it's like a residential block or something. Yeah, and once we get into the tunnels again, we actually start seeing more like uh, biologic enemies, right? It's not just the soldiers and the bombs. We start seeing like different kinds of flans. And, uh, yeah, little the glowy slugs. goo flans. Oh, yeah, Yo, nice these flans are kind of assholes. Um, yeah, I got fucking melted by them a few yeah, times. Yeah, me too. And then there's like nudibranch type things again, those slugs. Yeah, yeah, they're back. But they got like big kind of almost like... Uh, was it like the Luchador Pokemon? It has like oh, a, has a bowl. Oh, it's Halusha, yeah. It's has, it has like a Halusha. Uh, yeah, Griffith. On it. <laughs> yeah. I guess Femto, but... <laughs> but yeah, yeah, these guys are kind of assholes. There's there's a chest that has a hero's amulet, which will cast bravery when your HP is low. Um, oh. That only functions once per battle, which sounds pretty good, um, pretty usable, but I mean, you know, you might also have yeah, someone on good. your team who can just like pop off bravery whenever, so... Phosphoric yeah. ooze is the flans in this one. They are glow in the dark. They, they are kinky yeah. faces. They can combine with each other to create yeah. a larger flan. And once they do, oh. That, oh boy. that combined flan is a motherfucker. Yeah. So a, li a little dangerous. Yeah, there's some fucking asshole fights in here. Like I got I think, <laughs> that is the best way to put it. There yep. are in fact some asshole fights in some this Some real area. fuck you fights for sure. Uh, right. Because uh who were the um Maybe not this branch of the uh, area, but the um, there's like an imp type enemy that uh yeah the little little dancey boys they're they're a lot less cute in this one they have like they kind of remind me of the flying eyes because they just have like a a big old eye yeah. oh yeah, yeah 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 that's right um yeah I think they're supposed to be like that that's like a reference to the to those like uh, ear him or something like that yeah um. But they're like goofier and gobliny looking. Uh, you know what they called in this one? But they can like call friends sometimes. Yes, yes. Which I got sucked in with like a few oozes and like those guys. Like, oh my god, it's like so this one's getting bigger and these ones are just keep appearing. <laughs> it's I died. I game over. Yeah, like they, three times. these battles can get real out of hand. Yeah, I, it, it's nice in the story context of what this place was built for and stuff. And it's kind of you know nice that they're like, oh yeah, no, like now you should probably start dumping some stuff into leveling up, um, and we'll give you as much opportunity as you want to do that here. Yeah. Should you decide? Oh uh, yeah, they are the air, uh, or they are called imps, I guess. <laughs> uh, Vanille said something interesting um, when I was coming up to a save point at one one point where she said, "What do you suppose happens to Lassie when their full powers wake up?" So I, I, I'm mm. imagining that might be some uh -huh. foreshadowing, but who knows? Maybe, maybe. Who could say? Not I. Um, yeah, once we uh, come out of like some subways, we do come out in this like very kind of more open like channel. Like it's just this kind of wide open. Uh, oh, the the big like underground sewer looking area. Yeah, like there's you actually can see. Uh, what is this? Yeah, this would be perfect for some Sahagin. <laughs> there's bridges kind of crossing across. Uh, I mean, first we come out and there's like. You see these like giant structures and there's like catwalks everywhere and you kind of kind of hop around different like ruined platforms. If there right? is anything that I love in a video game, it is walking around on like busted walls that have now become catwalks. I love I'm sucker for that shit. Mm -hmm. Love it so much. These are where you can like maybe backtrack around and like uh, find some items that were on other sides of barricades and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, this this area definitely seemed like um it, rainbow amulet or rainbow anklet is one thing I found around here. Yeah, there's like a saint's amulet as well. Um th this area definitely seems like there's a lot of different paths that you could take which would maybe encourage like backtracking and doing some full discovery, but um I do not want to do any discovery in this game and and this <laughs> section particularly is so long that I was like, "Ah, fuck it. Whatever's here, I don't care." 
Like, hopefully they didn't hide a fucking ultimate weapon somewhere, you know? <laughs> the thing I found is that some weapons, if you miss them, they will just show up in shops, but you just yeah, have to yeah. dish out for them. Because <laughs> money and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, vials of medicinal oil. That's something I found in one of these lower traverses. <laughs> vials of medicinal oil. Yeah, that's yeah. like when you get uh, a medical weed, but it's in vape form. <laughs> I love that there's like waves, uh, way markers on the walls that are in like pulse text. Yes. The instead of arrows, they have like half of a brand turned sideways that is like glowing. Oh, glowing neon green or I can orange see or it, yeah. pink. Well, that's cool. Yeah, there, there's a lot of like in the universe design to try to help you kind of like be able to. This navigate. is what pulse looks like. Yeah. I do like that they have like the the big sewer entrance kind of thing with the um with the water running off of it. So it's like the fugitive, oh, or yeah. more importantly, like yeah. the scene with Millhouse in the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Uh, yeah, I didn't do anything. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, when we hop down into some of the like, they look like almost like roads instead of walkways and some of these open yeah yeah chasm, we start uh fighting more of those weird bird enemies we fought on vile peaks <laughs> indeed we do um what are they called uh i almost thought it was a reference on uh nene but it's a uh, scottene okay and the uh i almost said stinkini i think it's a stinkini <laughs> oh yeah 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 these are the, the, like the... ska and stink yeah you know stinkini you know um, even when we're in these tunnels too, there's also fucking behemoth down here as oh well. Oh my god. Right. And let me oh, tell goodness. you, every time I fight a behemoth, I completely fucking forget that they have their standing like a guy move. They have their standing <laughs> like a guy thing. And Which, it fucking heals them all the way. Yeah, it heals them all the way by giving them, if you look at the numbers that pop up when they stand like a guy, it's five nines just 99,999 hp recovered oh, like they don't man. have that much hp but they have like more in like the 60,000 range i think but holy mm -hmm. fuck dude there's been i was getting so close to taking it down before it transforms and you i was can like do it you can I was like, do is it. that possible and i did get confirmation in my twitch chat that like yes but you have to be really good and really optimal to in order to do that. And I was getting so close and I couldn't fucking do it. And I was like, I hate these things. <laughs> I ran this area with uh, Vanille and Hope or Lightning, Vanille and Hope. And I could do it if I imperiled yeah. the behemoth first. And then I like try disaster to like just get that fucking stagger immediately. And then because Snow and Lightning both have commando, I could switch to like two commando and a Ravager and just like keep them up in the air the whole time. So yeah, it's so satisfying. Um, when, uh, but only just, only just. Like a lot of times, stagger would run out, and then it would be like, all right, time to cast fucking standing like a guy mode, and I would kill it while it's in the animation of standing up, and I'd be like, oh my god, oh my god, that's so sick. Um, I do want to talk about something near the Scottane and the Stinkini or whatever. Um, there's a <laughs> chest. Stinkini or something like that. There's a fucking chest that they're blocking. And I took them down and I was like, ooh, you know, we've been getting some cool armor and accessories and stuff here. I wonder what's going to be in this cool chest. This chest had fucking 600 gil in it. <laughs> That's fucking nothing. I, I was so pissed. I was like, you're giving me six, 600 gil at this point in the game? I would like to just not a spoiler i'm not gonna spoil anything i promise okay hey 600 didn't have before yeah, yeah, yeah that's fair. true i'm not gonna spoil anything so don't worry about this if you're listening at home don't worry no spoiler but i have been reading ahead to like post game stuff right and many things have said cp is not the problem post game gill is the problem post game yeah and so i've been fuck. like oh let me read about like what to do or whatever and like the the good strategies where it's like this is the best strategy for getting gill kind of thing it'll go here's the fastest way to farm gill in the game and if you do it this way you should have enough gill for everything in like you know 10 hours or so and i was like oh my god <laughs> mm, that uh really kind of throws a damper on on how i've been playing the game because i have <laughs> well, been spending gill like it's fucking no I, here's the thing i think the amount of gill that we make until the end of the game is like 0.5 percent of what you need so spend it or don't it doesn't matter okay because <laughs> the amount that we're gonna need is so astronomical that it's like <laughs> it doesn't even matter is there like a battle arena equivalent where i can just kind of like 
bit farm. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, really yeah. need materials to, <laughs> to sell. <laughs> yeah, so. we're farming Bitcoin in Final Fantasy 13, but it's called Gim. Just got my turbo button on just to keep smashing X so I can just like... <laughs> yeah. we, we got that every FNFF uh, fucking Minecraft server for another like year or so because it all... Yeah, we, yeah. We're turning that into a, a, a Bitcoin farming thing, but it's going to be for Gil in this game for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just have like a the whole Gil data center stonks, worth of dude, It's going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> we have an entire data center just full of like servers like just constantly <laughs> pumping away trying to fucking f- fight enemies and get us gill we're crashing the economy and like ruining like actual finance people's lives by just being like <laughs> shitheads on reddit about it <laughs> next chapter we're gonna like find out that like uh Vanille has a um <laughs> Has a bank account that she can't access anymore, even though she's been asleep for like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Years. She left her digital wallet on Pulse, and it's worth like 10, 10 yeah, Doge coins or whatever the fuck, which is seventeen billion dollars. Yeah, she's she's the richest person on Grand Pulse. Easy. But there's nowhere to cash it because everyone's dead. All the banks are dead. Yeah, yeah it's the episode <laughs> of Futurama with the anchovies where she goes back and and uses her uh, pin number, and she had like three dollars in her bank account, but with the interest of how long she's been asleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so um, speaking of those like crazy dancing bird people or whatever that we fight, the area where we start discovering them is kind of neat, right? Like we, this is a yeah, big open kind of chassis. Yeah. There's like I like there's a like, weird ring in the center of the room with like sus- that's kind of suspended or holding things. I don't know, it's 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 interesting like big open area. It's very yeah, it's, which I visit like this same identical stage like three times in this level. I feel like they literally this room is in there like three times. they copy yeah. paste it quite a bit, which like I, I'm not going to complain about that. So much that the shortcut to no, bypass fine. the enemies is there in all of them. Yeah, which when you jump down onto yeah, the thing yeah. and go backwards, you can just like walk around the uh, the road. Yeah, you can like, walk around the ring on the outside of the the room. It, it, it's very interesting. They're kind of like a behemoth or whatever. I'll just walk around them. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that we're like these giant. They're they're giant cylindrical rooms, right? And it seems like we're in a silo or something, like yeah. a silo. And across them Got are to these drown roads. In corn. Yeah, yeah. And across them go these roads, and like on each level, there's a different road that travels a different direction. And you could see how like if this was a maze of like transit or whatever, like how it would kind of work. Where you're like, okay, this is these are where all the roads cross each other. I do feel like we're like under Midgar? Or yeah, something. it's yeah, like an yeah. underground uh, hanging edge almost, like with these weird yeah. uh, mm. highways and stuff. Trussways. I mean, hanging edge, it's also underground. These so. Liz Trussways. Yeah. Shout outs to a real one. She killed the queen. <laughs> she tanked the fucking uh, the pound, and then she peaced out. Fucking idiot. <laughs> Just absolutely dipped. <laughs> um, after we pass through, I think the first one we go through, like a kind of you know ambulatory like a, a nice little hallway where we can save and maybe find an item off of one of like the branches yeah before we enter this big old room with these uh <laughs> giant fucking red glowing th- like it looks very intimidating i think we found something that's a little uh, i think scary. we found something yeah indeed um my first thought was like oh it's fucking like the cyber wolf from fucking Metal Gear rising with a fucking chainsaw on its head or something but it's uh there's some real big motherfuckers in this room right yeah, we got a little cutscene quick, right? We do, we do. It's a little short one. I think Saz is like, oh, these things are alive. Yeah, there, there's basically a different ambiance in these rooms, too. Like, we've basically, like, gone from what look like useful everyday areas kind of thing. You know, I mean, like, like, uh, like service roads and stuff like that. You'd They're in maybe infested by, like, fiends or whatever. In fe- exactly. They're not really, like, me, except for, like, the circuitrons and, like, pulse work, the nothing really feels like they really belong here. like oh yeah like whatever these like animals just moved in or just kind of like giant rats yeah. or whatever but this room like oh what the fuck is this big old yeah it's like a metal gear type of thing where like what the fuck is going on and, and they clearly belong here right like the lighting is very dim and it's like a bunch of blue leds that are uh lighting this room their gamer rigs are <laughs> completely souped up. Yeah, RGB lighting. They got yeah. those yeah. IKEA uh, like uh, display cases that you can put your Funko Pops in and change the lights. <laughs> so it's you know cool looking. <laughs> they feel like they belong like in the museum and like Seven Remake and like Shinra Tower or something like that. Right, like, yeah. showing off like. It's like a showroom of these like big weapons or whatever. You calling them like a Metal Gear is pretty good too because they they kind of similar to one in many ways. But they they're very like interesting. They're very asymmetric. Yeah, they're like horse-like, and they have a weird asymmetric like 
helmet arm. It's like a, a, a I almost want to call it like a, yeah, like it looks like there's a rail of like orange light kind of bending around it. Like a, yeah, yeah. a few, a series of blades, but almost like maybe they're like a rail gun or something kind yeah. of cool like that, yeah. which again, like very much going with the Metal Gear reference, where there's like a, just a giant fucking gun on one side of it. Imagine yeah. if it's you very will. kind of beautifully designed. Imagine if you will, dear listener, a horse that is made out of like blades uh, and it has the Yu-Gi-Oh uh, card deck holder thing oh uh, there, that's an perfect <laughs> perfect perfect it's pretty much what i it love is. that each of those uh, when when well spoiler uh some of them come alive right some of them come alive some of them don't interestingly Th- that they're, bothered they're me that some of them didn't yeah, i was yeah, really of, expecting them some to. of them saw us and we're just like nah, nah. <laughs> yeah they that. saw us kick the shit out of their homies and they're like okay we're gonna <laughs> actually just pretend like we're statues now yeah yeah exactly <laughs> i don't totally want none bad. of that shit <laughs> thankfully this is a linear game because i've like been playing metroid prime where like as you progress if you come through an area that you have before but you're like progress more like a thing that was like suspended a tank will just bust out and start fighting i'm like oh no yeah yeah, yeah real chekhov's gun energy that does not actually pay off in the third act <laughs> they're just decorative because and the way this happens is we fight one of them and then we see the other one come alive oh man like because of like how it's built like every segment of it looks like it's made of layers of like metal kind yeah of, like, layered together so it's like you can like make this thing if you like maybe a paper craft or something like that because you just like cut them out of like two dimensional shapes then like glue them together it could be like one of those metal ones that you can make now where it's like you yeah, break off all the metal like pieces and put them together or whatever oh yeah um, true th- this area has a really cool name give me a CNC machine let's go oh, what is this area called we're back high on the Mars Volta uh, scale where this is called the Hibernatorium oh hibernatorium, deal out like, the Hibernatorium yeah exactly um um but yeah, so the way that the, these fights happens is you fight one after the other, like you kill. They're the called one. berserkers, by the way. Yeah, um, you fight the my one for them that comes to life, and then you have to fight like the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My love for you is ticking clock, berserker. Um, <laughs> but you, you fight them like one, and then there's another one that has like slightly different moves, I think. And you're like, oh shit, like this is rough. Like we'll probably talk about the battles more in depth, but I wanted to point out that I was like, it would be really fucked up if I had to fight two of them at the same time. And then I saw that there were still two more left, and I was like, that's this game's move. <laughs> it shows you the pieces, and then it's like, fuck you, here, it, take it all. And then they just didn't. I was like, oh, yeah, they didn't do that. I'm glad it didn't happen because my god, this this whole section is long. But I was also kind of disappointed. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? This area is very long. Where we're talking about right now is like an hour from the intro cutscene. Like yeah. I know, like I met that it, we're like, just kind of like breezing through it, but it's it's there's a lot of padding. I feel like we're just yeah. like they're the game. Like oh, if this is where we're gonna master our powers and in gameplay mode. That means like you're gonna grind a lot. You're gonna walk a lot. You're gonna fight a lot of enemies. You're gonna have some enemies that poison you and take your health, and then you're just gonna yeah. have some fights where you're fighting like twelve things at once, and you just immediately die. And you're like, well, yeah. fuck. How do I get a preemptive strike on these fucks? <laughs> And everything now is expensive too, like in the Crystarium. So like, mm-hmm. it is kind of grindy. You kind of do have to kill everybody to get it all. It's saw you like, oh, you have five jobs. That means we're gonna tax you on all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's Indeed. a good way of putting it. The Berserker fights are wild. Like, I think I only f- I fought one and it's like, okay, I'm never gonna fight these things again. And just like down day, like for Saul and just bypass them. Yeah. But <laughs> you're fighting the one just kind of head on, but uh, it has a like. A secondary like floating sword that can like right can That's target, the, yeah right? the second one has yeah. the, the sword right centurion blade yeah uh, interesting because i read that as centurion um which is where the etymology of this name comes from it's like oh, centurion but they're kind of centaurs like they're centaurs with like six horse legs instead of two and no dude on the front like most centaurs that we know and love <laughs> <laughs> they're lacking the dude component but yeah it has a giant fucking sword and just free floating that you have to attack separately and it's called the uh, the Centaurian uh, blade, which is kind of funny. Oh yeah. So let me tell you about the Centaurian blade. All right. Let me let me tell you let me tell you about a little friend that I have talked about several times throughout the course of this podcast called Tri Disaster, and it's <laughs> the best thing ever. So the Berserker staggers pretty quickly, and if you roll into the battle in Tri Disaster, you can stagger before they bring out the Centaurian blade. And then, at, but you won't finish them in one go, right? Like the one stagger is not enough. 
But when they land, you can just try disaster them again all the way to stagger and they won't be able to call the blade. So oh, I nice. didn't get hit one time on any of these fights because they amazing. just kept trying to summon the blade. And I was like, no, sir. <laughs> I, I hate it when I'm trying to summon the blade. <laughs> So, like, these were all free fights, because I was just like, no way, three Ravagers, let's go. <laughs> so that's why I can't have Fang in the party. She's not a good Ravager. These things may be, like, my aesthetically, like, favorite mechanical thing we've fought so far. They're really, really cool looking. They are. <laughs> they look like the fucking robots that are, like, MIT is making to be, like, police dogs. Like, police <laughs> Resident Evil dogs that just, like, arrest you and, like, beat the shit out of you for uh, jaywalking. <laughs> Or whatever. If they had a metal cape or whatever. Yeah, I, I can't wait to be captured by these things in real life in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Got six legs. It's fucking brutalized under them. Real alien looking. I just went to it. So after, um,. After that fight, I actually got a new trophy called Lore Master, which is like a gold trophy, oh. which I'm assuming means I unlocked a lot of like data logs. I'll have to look into it to specify Do that. Do I have that trophy? I don't yeah, play... Yeah, it's probably, I mean, it'll Intel probably. Yeah, that, that would make perfect sense. Um, but uh, I went to go and check my trophies, but I'm not used to playing on PS3. So the, the first thing I did was accidentally open my thing and like almost hit quit game and i was like no 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 i'm not even gonna look at the trophies i'll figure that out later fuck it or i think i got to the trophy thing and it was like taking like five minutes to like download all the trophy information i was like ah oh, fuck this dude <laughs> i uh, i'm looking and i did in fact unlock lore master it was the last achievement i unlocked when i played this game two years ago nice so i at least got on it. steam you mean on Steam, indeed. Uh, yeah. Wait, so, have you, have, you, have you not been playing along with us? <laughs> no, 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 I've been playing along with you guys. I, I, a couple of years ago, I started playing Thirteen, and I got exactly as far as we are right now, and I quit on Steam. This seems like so a section that is... would be leading people to quit. I would say, like, it's, indeed, it's, indeed, indeed. It's, it, like we said, it's very grindy. It's very repetitive. The area is not that great. Um, lore master, you get when you discern the full attributes of one hundred enemies. Yeah. Uh -huh. The earliest you will get this um, is chapter 10, according to this uh, trueachievements.com. Well, that's good, because we're in chapter 10. Yeah. Love to see that. Yeah, it looks like I only have story-based achievements. Well, I guess I'm not playing good. Oh my god, someone in uh, on true... Uh, trueachievements.com has their profile picture and it's like the weird fucked up like Xbox version of me that sucks like the original yeah, metaverse bet, that yeah. Microsoft was trying to push um, but yeah, at least they had legs right yeah true <laughs> not <laughs> fake legs that they fucking lied about those cowards but <laughs> this guy uh, Brawler Rocks has like a cool like mafiosa kind of uh, outfit on but the more important thing about it is his profile picture has Chocobo Chick flying towards the camera doing a little oh, very yeah, good. That's, that's really cute I can't wait until we talk about all the Final Fantasy 13 tie-ins that you could unlock on the Xbox Live uh, <laughs> <laughs> metaverse <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that they had that. You can have like the portal gun and shit. I think mine had that, or you can have. I'm sure you can probably have. Like, I, I had the portal outfit gun. and like probably sword. I had the portal gun and a super meat boy like familiar that would nice. walk around. Um, but yeah, so this area is pretty much. It feels like we do the same thing three times. It feels like we do the same thing three times because we go right back into tunnels. We go into one of those. I thought I was going backwards at first until I realized there's different enemies. Yeah, like, yeah, because <laughs> it's so same. I do like the next open like sewer area. I think is very nice because once again, love jumping around on crumbly things, and there are like some nice little space. pillars. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love a good gray space. Call that the minutia. I love the minutia. Minutier. Minutier. Also, you know you're in a different area because the numbers on the walls change, so you know you're in like different sections yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah. Nice little attention to detail there. So you know we're not not in a you know reactor seven or whatever. We're working <laughs> right around whatever this fucking area is. Oh, we do get a new SAS weapon in the uh in the room with the Oh yeah the Berserkers, which is the We Eagles. get some weird weapons here. Yeah, I didn't actually look into any of the weapons that we got. I think we we got like the Umbra recently for snow, I believe, and we got yeah. um, the the Regals okay. here. I think other items that we can get for other uh, party members. But did you look at what the so we get down here? We haven't found uh, I think hopes yet, but we get one for hope as well. Have you looked at what these do? The weapons that are down here, I no. have not. No. They are very, very odd. They do something like um, they don't allow you to stagger, I think. Like it eliminates your chain bonus. Weird. 
at what cost? Yeah, like at what benefit? It would benefit. It, yeah, yeah. What's the reverse catch? What's the opposite of, of, yeah, what's the reverse catch? <laughs> let me, uh, let me. What's the throw? You know? Yeah, do you have, you don't have the name of them, do you? The Regals? The Ryan, okay. Or the Rigels? I think it's Rigel because I think it's like the star system, but I don't know that at all. Don't quote me You're on that. You're probably right. I'm just thinking of my, my buddy Regal, the uh, Dark Souls champion who hates Final Fantasy 13, so he doesn't want to come on this season. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Staggerlock weapons. Staggerlock weapons are all powerful, and you can synthesize the random instant chain ability from them, but the weapon cannot stagger a foe. Okay. So it so, sounds like a synthes synthesis might be a thing that we haven't unlocked yet or something. It might be one of those things where you like level it up and then you combine it with some of your equipment and then get something out of it. I don't know. Though. This is the uh, this is the toy gun from uh, Dirge of Cerberus that we can turn into Ultima weapon or whatever. I think we can find yeah the Regals the Alicanto is one. Is that a boomerang? Yeah, that's that's Hope's Staggerlock one. So Staggerlock is the 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 type of ability that keeps you from staggering somebody. Mm. Um, and it looks like what they're for is turning into instant stagger weapons. And I'm reading the the Game Corner Guide page about instant chain right now, and it says it's a very very low chance of actually triggering. But when it does, it just automatically staggers an enemy just off of one hit. I'm I'm reading the item description of it, and it's real dark. Yeah. It is designed for suppressing civilian riots. The killing power of these pistols is artificially limited. Oh my gosh. So I guess it's like the reason they don't stagger like in this like description of it is because it's like shooting like a beanbag instead of a shotgun shell, which still absolutely fucks up civilians, but you're supposed to shoot them at the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But nobody does that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, yeah. I thought that was very interesting. When I got them, I was like I, I'm sure that there's a practical application for this, but I don't know what it would be. Yeah. Is it so it's like a kind of roll of the dice, whether you like instant stagger versus... Yeah, but you never actually build stagger, but there's a very low chance that you might instant stagger, but apparently only once you level them up, so... That's interesting. I'm curious, like, what the math... Yeah, or, like, if there's manipulation, yeah. It's almost like it turns it into, like, a, a critical instead of a... Yeah, yeah. Instead of saying it's, like, a critical hit chance type of thing. Yeah, that seems Indeed. wild. I, I, all of this stuff and this section in particular really made me, like... as I, I love this battle system. I think it's wonderful. And I understand why they didn't do this. But it made me wish for things, like, in Final Fantasy X, where you could switch weapons on the fly or something. Or you could switch in and out party members, like... That would make this game so easy if you could just like have Saz cast haste, throw Vanilla in, have her do a yeah, barrel, yeah. switch out, and just have like your heavy hitters. Like it, that would make it like I, I would like there to be a mod of that because that would just be really interesting and and probably super fun. Yeah, you start out with like the Vanille Hope Saz party. You fucking get everybody boosted or whatever. Although I guess though, if you switched <laughs> out for the next party, then you wouldn't have any. None of them would be boosted, but. But yeah, the heavy hitters being Fang, Lightning, and Snow. Yeah. Two Sentinels? Come on, you wouldn't even take any damage. It'd be incredible. <laughs> they'd, be, they'd be both provoking the enemy. Yeah. The enemy can't decide where to go. So they, yeah, the, it just misses everyone because it shoots directly in the middle of both yeah, of them. They're standing in far enough them. apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, so obviously they wouldn't be able to balance that, but it's like, I'm just like, ooh, that would be really cool. But uh, after that, we eventually come up on a little clearing. And uh, nice little I think maybe before we walk into that clearing we should take a little break yeah i think that sounds good to me oh speaking of uh music as we were just humming. Um, the song that plays to this area is really cool. Uh, while we're like running around the the arc, um, it's a yeah. song called "Will to Fight." We actually heard it, I think once before during the flashback when we're uh, we see Saz and Lightning get on the train during the purge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's this cool like kind of driving like uh, kind of drum and bass like do 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 like this little driving thing. But underneath uh. it is almost like the ambiance and kind of uh, brooding purge music. Under, while there's like this kind of really intense like industrial beat going over it yeah yeah and there's like kind of shiny like choir and some of these stuff it's it brings back that stuff i was feeling at the beginning of the game which is kind of something from pulse it feels very uh otherworldly 
Yeah. It's cool. It's very otherworldly. Bam, bam. Bam. I did hear some uh, jaw harp when we were uh, first entering the or I forgot the note. Love yeah. it. Which song that was. I uh, I brought this up on the on the VG draft episode that we uh that we recently did, but I think the first instance of jaw harp in a Final Fantasy might be in Final Fantasy VIII with shuffle or boogie. Wait, hold on. Does Slam Shuffle have it? I don't know. I don't know if I know Slam Shuffle. I have to listen to it. Hold on. That's the one where they do that and then they welcome to the jam uh, shuffle. So Slam Shuffle does not have uh, Jaw Harp, but it does sound very much like me and High Robe, which does have Jaw Harps. So maybe your brain is just mashing those two together. Maybe um, so. I have I have booted up my PlayStation 3 to right before the boss that we're about to talk to, that save file. You're going to blast to see me on. How many ATB. Me. Yeah, how many ATV bars Vanille has in this section without <laughs> unlocking the one? And it is three. Because I was like, oh, damn, maybe she already has an Eidolon, and that's part of her mysterious past that she's keeping a secret and stuff. And it's like, no, no, no. Well, she has three ATV bars. Well, what I was thinking, I was saying, I was saying in the, the, the break or whatever, that, like, we've had four ATB for lightning since, like, chapter fucking four. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we've had it for so long. And Snow's and had it ever since August, we got him back. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was just like, no, I'm pretty sure that everybody has at least that many now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And but it's, it's the kind of thing, too, where if, if they're not your party leader, like, we haven't had to have Vanille as a party leader in, in a little while. She actually only has two in the U.S. release. <laughs> 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 Very nice. Yeah, but um, yeah, we pop out of uh, this access tunnel, and it feels again very uh, deep groundy because we see some uh, you know, bridge and like buildings, and because we're, things are opening up, it doesn't seem like we're underground anymore, but we're still like there's still a ceiling of sorts. Yeah, yeah. I thought we were like on a bridge because in in the, in the distance um, that we do see like these arches, like as if it was like the George Washington Bridge and some like suspension cables and stuff like that. Yeah, it feels very urban. Um, and we see a familiar face walking toward us, right? And the, the first sign of another human being. We see this person. It, it's it's Sid. Sid is here. Oh, Sid our Rains. old homie. Everybody loves Sid Rains. Love that guy. He's on our side. When it's Sid Rains, it's Sid pours. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ain't that the truth? Um, Saz and Vanille have no idea who this is. Oh yeah, I guess Saz and Vanille wouldn't know. Yeah, because uh, first like fans like Rains. What what are you doing here? And then like oh yeah to reassure Vanille and Saz like don't worry he's with us or whatever he's like he's part of the sanctum but he's been helping us out and then Fang just like hushes Snow's like wait why are you here like yeah yeah what you- wait you being here is probably bad <laughs> yeah, yeah because yeah. we were sent we were brought here by the Primarch and then last we saw his head he was sending us to like fight the Primarch like, yeah ambush them so and like, Lightning wait, puts two and two together real quick right. Like, like you fucker. <laughs> yeah, she immediately is like, Reigns, you traitor. You scum and, fuck. And she runs after him and like swipes at him. Mm-hmm. He easily dodges like all of her hits. And she, yeah, she takes a few swipes at her. And he manages to disarm her. He, yeah, he disarms her and does like an Aikido throw to her. He disarms and her then, with a smile. And then he grabs her sword as it like spins in the air. I love this reveal because he grabs it as it, um, it falls down, and in like one swift motion, as he's turning it, you see that he has a brand on his hand that's yep, glowing. Yep. I was like, "Oh shit!" It turns out, fucking Sid Reigns was a sea all along. Yeah. yeah, and he says, "I put you on a path." That was my focus. Yeah, which makes sense because, like we were saying, like there's the whole thing that dies. He's like, "Yeah, all this has been orchestrated. Like you've been following our instructions to the T already." And it's like, "Oh well, so Sid Reigns just delivered us to Dysley. That's all he really did." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fang is like, uh, you're Le C, and Reigns, of course, says, since long before we met. Longer than I'd care to remember. <laughs> or you'd care to know. <laughs> Le C, that's a name I haven't heard since. <laughs> <laughs> I did my best to assist you, as bid by the Sanctum Foul C. Now do you understand? I love that while he's saying this, he's still holding Lightning Sword. Yeah, he is, yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, I mean, good uh, symbolism. He has the upper hand now. Now do you understand? The Falci have watched over you, guiding your every step. The luck that saved you time and again was a deliberate machination. Why, you may ask? The Primarch, or should I say, Bartandalus, is crafting you into the instruments of Cocoon's demise. Which, I think we kind of already knew, So good. Right? We assumed that when we got to the fifth arc, at very least. Yeah. yeah. We know that, like, he 
basically told us, hey, you have to destroy Cocoon. Like, that's your focus, and you guys are dumb as hell for thinking otherwise. Um, but mm. Fang's like, yeah, we've been played for fools. Uh, and Saz is wondering, like, a Cocoon Falsy, why? Like, And then we get just the fattest fucking lore dump out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. Insane. <laughs> this is the pretty much equivalent every game, I feel like, has had this where we're like, we're in a hologram. We're explaining the history of the world. Like we, Seymour gave us a hologram tour. Yeah, Bugenhagen is here, floating around. Or in like the Seven remake, we're like also like and like here's the history of like the ancients and shit. Like, <laughs> but this time we uh, we hear about the Maker. Yeah, right. Yeah, why to restore the Maker, the entity responsible for creating both humans and fallacy. Mm. And then we get a little cutaway. What would you call that? A little cutscene. It's like a flashback, kind of. I mean, it's, it's it's a lot of footage we've already seen before. A lot of nothing yeah. new, but as like because it opens on the uh, the kind of zooming thing as Saz is like busting out of like cocoon when we were like flying out out of the gates or whatever. Yeah, it feels very Star Warsy. And then we see like s- we see scenes of the festival. Uh, or the the parade at Saz and Vanille saw. We see yeah, scenes the old of war holograms. Mm-hmm. We see the Palamacia actually flying the vestige into the the um, hanging edge. We see mm-hmm. that. But as all of this is being, as we're seeing all of this, Reigns is explaining like the history of the world essentially, where he says, "Long ago, the Maker departed this world, leaving the two races behind. In a sense, human and Falci are brothers, orphaned by the same parent. As for the humans, they forgot the orders impo- or the order imposed by the Maker." They began to war amongst themselves for the first time in history. As that's being said, we see a shot of like Psycom shooting and then like Godot shooting back and stuff like on Which the trust. Which isn't range. really fair. I feel like that's a fallacy organized. Yeah, like thing. it's literally it's, it's, you guys made us do the fucking war, guy. Yeah. Like, Look at these yeah. g- stupid humans fighting amongst themselves. These Look. humans only just want to fight. It's like motherfucker, you're the one sending them to fight. The other ones <laughs> yeah, are just I defending know. themselves. My brother in Christ, you. They, it's like we. Like, <laughs> My brother in Christ, Eric, Eric you the purge. It's the, it's the Eric Andre meme, <laughs> like he, did, he just fucking shot Hannibal, and he was like, uh, like, uh, like, who would she? Why, why, would, why would, would humanity do this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's like kind of supposed to be kind of more like less literal because like, oh, we don't have footage of the war of transgression. We haven't like, yeah, made yeah. that entry in this series yet. So <laughs> yeah, right after that, it goes right to the scene of fucking snow driving around on the ice and Psycon <laughs> shooting at him. Like, he's like, come on, guys, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Reigns is just like humanity was lame and unbased, and it shows Snow riding around on a motorcycle. Like, My brother in Christ, Come on, you're the, the one guy. who, who d- has posted cringe. Stop it. <laughs> we also see the mob of people ratio, trying ratio, to fight ratio. us. Yeah, r- ratio plus L. But yeah, we see the the, the scene with the um <laughs> ratio, the ratio plus Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we also see Hope, the scene with the the mob trying to kill them and stuff. Which again, that was you guys. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was so you probably, guys. You did this. You guys. That's all. Yeah, this is all fallacy. Reminds me shit. of like when when shitty right wingers are like, oh well, the human nature is to like be brutal to one another and like and and fight. And Empathy's stuff. a like, weakness. And it's like yeah. no. Yeah, like yeah. You, you have created these systems and this structure that <laughs> makes people get desperate enough to where that's what happens to them. It's not human nature. It's actually very much orchestrated. God damn it. <laughs> well, Reigns continues on. He says, um. The fallacy focused on recalling their lost deity and returning the world to its former glory. Damn, they really do sound incredibly like <laughs> like far right dudes. Anyway. This purpose lies at the heart of all their actions. Calling back the maker requires a fitting sacrifice. Yeah, we've heard. The destruction of Cocoon. The lives of this world's entire populace in bloody tribute. Which I feel like is there's there's the plot right there, right? Like that's yeah. FF thirteen. The Kill reason the that we're gonna to take out raise Katoon. God. Yeah, is to fucking bring back a maker god who has left for a long time. It, it suddenly actually became a this, from this the is software. deep ground. This is Omega. They're trying to bring back Omega. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. It's 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 real bloodborne. Oh Joe. Real bloodborne yeah. shit here. Like And Hope is like, I don't get it. Why do they need us? Yeah, that's that's crazy talk. 
Yeah, yeah. Couldn't Falsy end Cocoon with just a thought? Yeah, this is an interesting part, yeah, because Hope's like, why don't the Falsy do it? They're they're huge and they're in charge they're of it. They're gods. <laughs> and Rain yeah, says... Th- this this gets a little wishy-washy for me. Like, in, it, it's it's fitting with... Like, it'll the, come together a little bit better later. <laughs> okay, because uh, I was going to say, it's 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 it, it, to me, this whole thing was like, can Jesus microwave a burrito so hot that he himself cannot eat it? it was That's kind the of thing. Like the, FF13 answers that question of could Jesus microwave a burrito so hot he couldn't eat it? And the answer is no, he could not. <laughs> like, like it's, it's pretty like definitive. But he can like, have someone else do it for him. But he could have someone else microwave that burrito. Exactly. Yeah, it, no, it's, it's funny. Like I don't want to give anything away. I'm not going to spoil anything. But this is like the the final big speech of the game is the explanation of this one thing so <laughs> okay okay interesting yeah it, it does come back this really was final fantasy 13 we always <laughs> when they say that yeah. i'm just getting so sick of all these final fantasies 13 <laughs> <laughs> but about that uh rain says their existence is bound to the creation and maintenance of this floating shell it's their very nature that holds them in check and hoops you know hope says Hoops. So yeah, you, we should call I, him I did call him Hoop. God damn it. <laughs> I think I, I played that game oh. Grounded recently. And I played as a character who plays basketball, I guess, and they call her Hoops. <laughs> hoops. Her, na- her real name's like Amy or something. I'm like, yo, I'm playing as Hoops because I also love to play Fucking. basketball. I have not played basketball since like <laughs> like second grade and a little bit in high school on my lunch break when I worked at my high school and we could go to the gym. <laughs> so so Hoops McDestime says... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing in the rules that says Hope can't let's see can't play basketball. Uh, <laughs> he says <laughs> He says, So you mean Cocoon Falsy can't destroy Cocoon? They needed tools. And I like Vanille has like Vanille's answer that she always has, where she yeah. says like well, if we can do, if we can stop all this by doing nothing, then we'll just do nothing. Which, I like, like how she has the Ned Flanders parents approach, but it's actually like <laughs> good. Which is it's right. actually for a good reason. <laughs> We've tried everything except nothing. <laughs> We've yeah, tried yeah, nothing, tried everything nothing except will get us out of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, like, I think is kind of base. I like. Is like, it supposed to be like a stalemate kind of thing? She's just going on the sea strike. That's fucking. That's yeah, praxis. Exactly. That's great. Yeah, goddamn right. We'll see. Walk out. Yeah. But we say you should unionize. And like, and Reigns even says like, ah, noble, I expected as much. She's trying yes. to uh, seize the lessees of production. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Bartandles walked out 30 seconds into our like reading of our, <laughs> our <laughs> bargaining or whatever. So much for good faith. <laughs> Snow kind of yells at Reigns and he's like, you lied to us. What happened to your dream of rebuilding Cocoon for the people? Was, was that a lie? a lie? Yeah. And Reigns is like, oh, that was a shadow of a dream from when I was human. And like, which I like, though, that like, I, I that do like was Reigns. Yeah, that like, that is Reigns' goal. But like, since he's been made to see, like, everything is too fucking impossible that he just can't do it anymore. Yeah. And uh, it's just like, it's, it, he's talking about nature here as well, being like, oh, well, it's against the Falsy nature to destroy Cocoon. So they have to find loopholes or whatever. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, that was my nature. Or, like, that was my idea, but it's against my nature to actually accomplish that. So, I, you know, what are you yeah, going to do? Yeah, like, yeah. You can't yeah. do it now. <laughs> I'm just doing my job, sir. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And then he said, I gained he all says, the power I could hope for, but was a puppet with no will to wield it. Right, it right. It wasn't the fallacy who changed. It was me. Yeah, Vanille says you were made a lessee. Um, but, like, so, so are they asking, like, who made him a lessee or what? I was kind of confused by this part because I thought we already established that he was a Lissy. I guess they're just kind of hammering it home a well, little bit. I, I think it's that like Vanille's saying it. Yeah, I think Vanille's being like, "Oh, and then when you okay had gained this power to finally do something about it, you were made a Lissy." Yeah, we're just going yeah. through the timeline. I got you. And he says, uh, "A Lissy tied to an inescapable focus, a slave of destiny. I'd lost hope, and I'd all but given up on dreams of freedom." And then Saz is like, what, what are you saying? And he goes, I'm here of my own accord, not by foul sea order. Which, yeah, he does, like, switch gears in the middle. It's hard to keep up with, like, yeah. that's what Reigns does. exactly this is he, going. He always keep him guessing. Always keep him guessing. Always keep him guessing. Bobbing and weaving. <laughs> but uh, he says, seeing you fight brought it all back. Brought back the future I once strove for. I, too, will challenge my fate. And, like, at first, hearing this, I'm like... Oh, he's yeah, gonna base. join us, dude. Let's he's go. He's gonna join us. He's gonna help us. Sid Rain's this gonna MF eat. somehow has five bars already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Lightning is like 
realizes what's getting ready to happen right she's like mm-hmm. oh right. no like she, lightning has been ahead of me as a as the player this entire scene where she like goes after reigns yeah, before sharp. i put it together she's sharp and so she's like easy guys she says, let's see senses and rain says if i defeat you here the foul C plan will fail and i'm like oh no mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> uh, i mean which, real like, he's not wrong real he's not himbo. wrong he's not wrong and yeah, it's kind of noble in its own fucked up and weird way like he, he's being kind of noble here he's like oh i'm gonna challenge my fate that i was put on in the same way that you have been challenging your fate uh but i'm gonna do it in the dumbest possible way instead of just joining forces with you i'm gonna fucking yeah, yeah. kill you <laughs> I guess, well, I guess, like, Sid doesn't have any faith that we'll be able to challenge it, you know what I mean? He's yeah, like, yeah, I guess you... he kind of assumes, like, oh, I'm just gonna kill you, and then, you know, that's that. Yeah, he says, he, he says, like, that that's what will make the Falsies plan fail. He's gonna save Cocoon by killing us, because we're, yeah, like, destroying the, the tools. Destroy yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. I guess challenge was a weird word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, says, no, he says defeat, I guess, okay. No, I'm yeah. just thinking. I was thinking of how, uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> He says, I will use all of my remaining power. I will set you free. And like, while that's happening, he turns into like a crystal beast. He turns into Seymour plus Sephiroth. Yeah, he turns yeah. into Seymouroth. His his good arm turns into like kind of a seeth, a kind of a crystal seeth type of thing. He kind of like exists within a human crystal and seeth and existence. Oh, all yeah, at once. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a guado. He's like all your favorite, uh, uh, minor bosses <laughs> combined together. There's a Toydarian in there. <laughs> <laughs> a Toydarian? What? <laughs> yeah, you said a Watto. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know you said Grotto. And we get in a fight with him now, and what did you all think about this fight? How did it go for you? I I restarted it three times. Just I had to restart of... it three fucking times. I think I didn't game over. I was like, oh, this isn't really working as fast as oh, I Because I, I think I forgot to like make a paradigm that I needed. So, like, I think one I really liked was using uh, Bully, which yeah. I kept forgetting to put on because... Yeah, he uh, just kept calling him a nerd and pulling his pants down to show his underwear <laughs> and have all the girls laugh at him. <laughs> because he buffs himself up a lot. Um, and so I wanted to make sure I had a someone who was kind of wailing on him, but also had a, a saboteur going. Okay. Just kind of deep, kind of nulling out his buffs because he, like, constantly is, like, adding, like, haste and, like magic up attack up i forgot the name of oh my god he's always buffing himself and he is always attacking so so I, thankfully he goes through these phases where he'll like guard for like a few moves yeah i print almost always went to combat clinic because he would use a uh, seraphic ray sometimes which would take out like oh my god everyone's like, hp down halfway yeah at least Oof. yeah but it took a little while i think it took me about 10 minutes to get through this once so, i finally did it apparently this is a difficult fight um, but I, you would know it. Tell us I what you li- did. No, buddy. Like, I, I didn't even do. I just like was like, oh, okay, this is going to be me learning the thing. And then before I knew it, the fight was over. And I was like, oh, okay, sick. And like to the point where I was actually, I was watching Ninny's uh, learn, I think, the Bar- uh, Bartandalus fight. And uh, Zwanzig was on the stream coaching him and everything. And, um, I overheard Zwanzig talking about when I was playing. He's like, yeah, like Carl definitely struggled with this fight. And I could see some of the things that he was doing like wrong on this and stuff. He's like, but then he got to the boss in chapter 10 and I saw that and he did really well. So it looks like he's gotten much better at battling and understanding the battle. <laughs> and I was like, hell yeah. Like, I don't think he knew that I was there and I heard it, but I was just like, oh, that's, that's so good. Yeah. It's like yeah, the opposite yeah. of Ebenezer Scrooge hearing people talk about him. And it was just, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like sick. Um, yeah. So I just, I, I don't know if I just got lucky. I'm like reviewing my footage. I don't think i did anything i was gonna say i need to go review your footage and just uh yeah i think i was just like i kind of knew that he was buffing himself up and i had a team like vanille had in peril and and i was just kind of always trying to be aware of that and i i just won the fight and got five stars and i was like oh, okay Incredible. they gave us they gave us an easy one after bartandalus and, and then i heard <laughs> apparently it's not easy for most I, people i think this is like one of the hardest battles in the game i had fucking Fuck me up several Man, times. Th- Kept me on my toes. That's th- for this sure. This game's wild like that. Like it is wild like that. Yeah, they are like again. Like, I think very similar to ten, where like the, the fights seem like puzzles. I think kind of the, to the key out, like, to my success might have been that I had exploitation as a paradigm, which is commando and double saboteur. Ooh. Oh, so I think I was good. just saboteuring him like as much as possible, especially when he was doing the guard thing. I was like, well, I can't really do much, so I'll just you know get a couple shots in as commando and then 
everyone like imperil and all of that. Uh, I, I think mean, you Lenta, can also slow him, so you that's can probably a huge help. The time that I beat him, so it took me three tries, four tries, and the time I beat him, I switched Fang in, and that was like a huge difference. Was just having Fang on the team because like casting slow made such a difference in this fight because I yeah. could not keep up with him. Oh yeah, that's so right. You're probably right. Fang has slow. I was thinking yeah. about yeah. swapping her out for Saz because Saz has haste, but damn. Yeah. This game has too many good characters. <laughs> I, I was know, looking at what three saboteurs would be. It's called Infiltration. I like that. It worked out okay. I was kind of mostly sticking with Bully and uh, Combat Clinic. Unless he like was staggered, then I think I would switch over just like Relentless Assault. Where yeah, I had I had a lot of re Relentless Assault as well. I like how one of his moves is recovery shift, where he's just like, oh, I gotta punch in my card and do this shift real quick where I recover, and he can cast, <laughs> he can cast uh, Asuna. Yeah, he, he does a really cool transformation at like about two-thirds of his health. Yeah, metamorphosis. Yep. Where he uh, becomes more biblically accurate. <laughs> he becomes, um, you've, you all heard of the one-winged angel, you gotta go to the eight-winged angel. Is it eight or six? I can't tell. I think it's eight. Oh, he does have eight. Oh, shit. He's got four on each side, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. When he turns into that version, he does this move when he comes out of stagger where he does like a giant crazy martial arts combo to you that does like 10, 11 hits or some shit. God, he was launching lightning so much. I was just feeling like it. It would just take me from full health to dead. It would just game over me. I would just be Damn. like, well, if I don't have buffs up, that's it. It's game over. That's again why I needed like a synergist going at all times. I brought my last party was fucking lightning, hope and fang. Because, nice. like, Hope is throwing Protect on everybody. Fang was always keeping him slowed. Yeah. That's the only I, way I was able to do it. I feel like Vanille, ever since the, um, I forget which fight it was that I had to use in peril in order to beat it. It might have been Brynhilda. Um, like, I just am like, I cannot ever not have her on my team. Like, if I can imperil something, I need to use imperil. Imperil owns. <laughs> insane. So, like, with that, I also had combat clinic and um, solidarity, so I had a lot okay. of defensive things and and just a couple of, like, I had ruthless, which I forget what it is. I think it's probably, like, two commandos and a uh, and a ravager, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. And I just had relentless. It's actually a uh, commando, ravager, saboteur. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even better. Because um, I was kind of just always, like, anytime he put up buffs, I would just take him down um yeah I, I do like when he does guard in his second form all eight of his little wings just kind of like cover him like he's like closing his eyes at a scary movie or something like <laughs> <laughs> he's a little cocoon yeah <laughs> that kind of gave me a, i'm thankfully like that kind of gave me like a chance to breathe in the middle of this he also because he sometimes cures himself too he does like a little bit of cura he cures yeah. himself a lot too mm -hmm. yeah you can also poison him it's which curasa. i did so yeah i think that definitely helped Oh, oh! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> again. Yeah, it's a cool fight. Um, um, yeah. How's that? How's that music in this battle? I don't remember it. Um, oh, let me triple check. I think it's just the generic boss music or whatever. Well, it's yeah, it's the uh, it's the same fight you hear usually during like the Idolan battles, which is like dun 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 dun. dun, oh, dun okay. Dun, dun. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a uh, saber's edge, which we would normally hear during boss fights. Oh, he can poison you too, and, and oh yeah, he was poisoning Fang a lot. That's why I think Combat Clinic is like a necessity there and someone who has Asuna as well because you can really get you can get a lot of debuffs that are really going to mess you up. <laughs> Which it's nice that he has the guard phase where you can kind of just like get back to square one and it's not just like it's not like Bartanda it's, it's just like yeah. Yeah. I like that uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the fight that he uh, traps us in in like a kind of a ring of the glyph. Yeah, it's like we're stuck in a yeah, we're surrounded by the cocoon uh, brand yeah. uh logo. It's just kind of like in trapping us in like a weird like ritual circle. No escape. It's cool. It is cool. I like it a lot. Like they didn't really need to do that because like most of our boss fights aren't we can't really there's no fleeing from battles in this yeah, fight. Yeah, it's not like we're trying to escape, but it's a nice little touch. <laughs> I, I like how he summons that too. He's doing like the cool like Freddie Mercury like pose with the <laughs> mic in the air. And like he's got like a, a Dragon Ball Z aura around him of like dark, like uh I guess like ruin uh, maybe type magic. And then he just snaps his finger and like one of the brands comes out and then they all just like encircle us. It's real cool. Double team. Yeah, it's a cool fight. I think uh it's it's super cool. I mean, it was challenging. I mean, I restarted it because I like that you can just retry. Like, well, this is working. I'm mean, gonna try and like change my uh, paradigms or my party and like just start over. 
without feeling like I had to backtrack very far, which I appreciate that this game kind of lets you do. Interestingly, when he transforms, he also has the cocoon symbol on his chest. Oh, interesting. Oh. It's like tattooed on there. I thought you were going to say, interestingly, he also has eight dicks. In addition interestingly, to the eight wings. he has eight dicks and <laughs> every one of them get their own different target that you have to attack. <laughs> <laughs> What was your uh, what was your score, everyone? Oh, what was my score in time? That's right. Oh yeah, I actually um, I I think I'm just doing this because it just feels good. Um, I think I was down to where he was like maybe had um, maybe a tenth of a, like his HP left, and I called on Odin because he was oh, uh, nice. <laughs> I had him saboteured him enough where he had like he had slow ruin and uh, curse or whatever. Nice enabled. Is oh, Fog my- the one with it? I wanted I- to say. When he um is ruin the name of it? What's the name of the no, one? No, ruin where, um, is uh, not ruin. Uh, ruin is the non elemental. Yeah. yeah. What what's C- is curse fog? Maybe is the one where it's what's the one that makes you stagger? Either like you like fought you like your poise. Vigilance or whatever. and curse. I think are curse. The, uh, the stagger. I ones. had him cursed, and it made such a fucking difference because when he would go for his fucking insane martial arts moves, I was just like, would just boom, knock, <laughs> stop that shit, <laughs> and he would just be like, ooh. It's so, and like again, the, that's what I'm, would kill me in the other ones too because he would do that move and it would take me from full HP to nothing and I would just die and be like what am I supposed to do about that but when he had curse on and I was like what other game would that be a good status effect like that you would care to put that status effect on mm-hmm. and it saved my fucking life yeah the, the status like the, the, the debuffs and, and the statuses in this game are like probably the best in any final fantasy game it's i've so played good. like they're ridiculous like i think the only thing that might beat it is bio in final fantasy 10 as being more yeah, overpowered yeah. but that's like the one thing and then this game just has like everything good i know it's, this it's is so like good. the haste of ff1 <laughs> i i always think i i do think that like rpgs in general are best when they lean heavily into their statuses yeah definitely yeah that's why Pokemon's the best JRPG that's ever existed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was able to, when he was at the last 10th and I already had him like kind of debuffed enough, like, all right, let's call out Odin and just fucking just wail that's on awesome. him. Because I feel like it's just, it's just fucking cool. And I just, uh, because I'm, I'm always trying to like nail it where like the, his uh, Zan, Zantasusin, whatever you call it. Zantasukin. Yeah. Zantasukin. Like that is always a want to be, wait, like I want to see my score come up as she's handing off the weapon back to Odin when she's done. And yeah, do it this oh, looks very so cool good. whenever you do that. I got zero stars, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> what was your, was what was fucking your cool. score and time? Target time was 7 minutes 37. Battle duration was 10 minutes 5 seconds. That's so short. Yeah, that's nuts. That's crazy short. Yeah. What was yours, Curtis? My target time was 10, uh, 10.08, and my battle duration was 7 minutes 28 seconds. A score of 12,560. Nice. It's maybe because my save got kind of fucked up and for some reason my like skill trees got like my my Crystarium got reset. So I think I like temporarily like uh, enabled a cheat thing just to kind of buff my characters back up. So I maybe accidentally overshot oh, it. Maybe. Maybe you're like quote unquote <laughs> over leveled. That's why. Also I'm in EBC mode. So yeah. my my target time was nine minutes and 10 seconds. And my mm-hmm. battle duration was four minutes and eighteen seconds. God damn! So I got eighteen points per second. Melted through this man. I fucking I didn't even realize. I like again after Bartandalus. I like I'm still expecting like second phases and shit. And I'm just like okay, yeah. like, and I'm just like go 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 go. And then uh, yeah, I, I I I think I just got lucky honestly. With we're gonna get to the fucking the ultimate like what I think is like the hardest fight in Final Fantasy mainline story or whatever in this I can't game. Fucking wait and for it. Carl's just gonna be like, so when do we get to that? And I'll be like, oh, it was the last boss. It was the last one that we just did. Are you like? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> we, we I think I will boss. probably get one. my fucking ass kicked, and I will probably curse this game <laughs> out. Like I have so many Final Fantasies in the past. <laughs> um, no, what, I, what I assume will happen is like we'll get to that boss that is just fucking insane or whatever and then we'll we'll get to the next boss that will just be like a quick side boss or whatever and you'll be like oh man you're right this one is hard and i'm like <laughs> no no it was the last one <laughs> yeah, what yeah that, that I, does I did that like one in two happen. minutes and 10 seconds my dude is wednesday <laughs> <laughs> um, some boss huh like oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we do get probably the most important lore item after this fight as a spoil uh-huh. the moogle works Oh, indeed, we get Moogle Works. I know nothing about it other than its name, 
I think it gives us weird uh, weapons, if I remember right. Or I'm weird, very um, excited about Moogle Works. Or no, wait, it's uh, accessories, I believe. Going back to um, going back to what we were saying earlier about his transformation, we also get the Tetra Dick Crown. Oh, Tetra Dick Crown. That's right. <laughs> tra- 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 tetratic Crown. I guess it would be Tetratic, Indeed. right? Indeed. <laughs> oh, so the, so Moogle Works. Uh, if you go into your uh... I'm a data log into the shop. This is a new shop called Moogle Works, which says, Greetings, Kupo Tears. At Moogle Works, you'll find accessories the likes of which you've never imagined. <laughs> what you do with them? Well, that's something your imagination can help you with, Kupo. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Based. So, um, I did not actually see what was in there, but... I, I'm guessing accessories that you can buy? Yeah, oh. I, I looked in it, and I, I don't think I bought anything. But... Again, I'm terrified to spend gill. <laughs> I, I yeah. have been spending it a lot and and uh, upgrading weapons and shit, but now I feel like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're like don't don't. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Stuff. I'll be fine. Um, but anyway, so we get to the end of the fight. Um, and and Reigns says he's like in his like not death throes, but he's clearly been defeated. He falls into a Gomenasai pose. Oh yeah, Gomenasai pose. Yeah, he does that little. He's on his hands and knees. So he's been defeated. He says, ironic, isn't it? The only thing I wanted was a moment of triumph. But how it ends isn't important. Just do what you know is right. Trust yourselves. And then he turns fully into Crystal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which he filled his focus. His focus was getting his fucking ass kicked by me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be very embarrassing. Like your focus, you have to get just like. You have to get beat up by three girls. <laughs> it's like, well, we should all be so lucky. <laughs> yeah, I, I would also turn to Crystal immediately afterwards. Um, yeah, if I don't, if I don't get my ass kicked by three girls soon, I am gonna seeth out. I swear to God. Um, but uh, interestingly, in the behind the scenes uh, section for Sid Reigns on the fandom page, it says. His specific crystal stasis form is called the Lindsay type or Lindsay type by the Final Fantasy 13 Ultimania, which Alex is now an owner of. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it should be here in next week. So. The, because uh, I, I could not find any scans of it and everything I have found is very low res. So I'm going to hopefully uh, extract some fun uh, in- tidbits from that. Hell yeah. But uh, yeah, Saz so like, what? Did he complete his focus? And Snow's like, I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All Reigns did was try to save Cocoon in his own way. And he kind of comes to a realization, maybe. Yes, and I was like, oh, his own way. About the rules of Lassie? I feel like <laughs> the thing about Snow... <laughs> it's whatever your heart wants it to be. Yeah. Th- he's con- his, his brain is constantly just... He cannot get his brain off Sarah, which, I mean, fine. But we'll find out later that he had made a connection that maybe... uh, Yeah, maybe Sarah didn't complete her focus the one way that can be completed. Yeah, maybe it's not. She also maybe found a loophole. Yeah, you know, like maybe Sarah completed her focus in her own way, the way that Reigns kind of just did in this weird type of crystal stasis. It's like, this is weird. Like, why would this he be his focus to get his ass kicked by us? I feel like with Snow, if I was Snow... Unless it is to, like, train us. I was going to say, we beat him and he sent us on our way. He kind of did fulfill his focus, didn't he? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like if he was like, we're gonna need someone to like basically be a a test to these let's see we're training or whatever. I love just how everything in this game is just like, oh, this is all like really not what's the word the word about um the narrator not being trustworthy. Oh yeah, yeah, unreliable, um, unreliable. unreliable yeah, yeah. So every source that we have is just an unreliable narrator. So it's like we don't know which fucking way is up. We don't know if like the thing that like sure Dicely to us is this like godlike being, and we can't even fathom anything about him. But at the same time, like he could still be fucking wrong. You know, like. There's no reason why he might not just be wrong. And I really mm. like what Rain says. And again, unreliable narrator. So who knows? But this to me was like all I needed to hear to be like full himbo mode of being like, no, Snow has been right this whole time. And everyone's trying <laughs> to tell him otherwise because he says, <laughs> just do what you know is right. Right after he did what he thought was right and fulfilled his focus in this way and stuff. And and I'm just like, that's all the evidence I need that Sarah was right. And Snow oh is also God, right. Dude. And like, I, I could be completely wrong and this could all be completely wrong. <laughs> I was going to say, I think like, I feel like it's Trust great. Trust yourselves. <laughs> oh, I think it's very like much like a Snow thing to just make something up. <laughs> yeah like no exactly but you know like, like, oh, whatever. I all i'm saying is i trust reigns a whole lot more than i try, trust nicely 
I guess so, but I don't think they have. I don't think they have conflicting stories, though. Is the thing you know? What yeah, I mean? true. Exactly. I, I think like Reigns and Dysley's story is exactly the same. Where they're like, "No, this is what you're yeah. doing." You're, and you're you, you also just completely debunked that by being like, "Yeah, maybe his focus was actually to train the listening." Well, I, I, I don't know. If it's debunked. It could be. Could be. Could no, be. You know, yeah. No, I, I just mean like it, it's it's an interesting discussion we, to have. We won't know until Alex obtains the Final Fantasy Thirteen Ultimania <laughs> and then reads what the Lindsay type crystal stasis is. Yeah. Does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Does that mean it's just cool? Like it means they get cool sent. As a faith to the real Xanarkin. When the Lindsay Buckingham version retired, they had to get <laughs> two different crystals to replace him in the band because he was just that That's good. Right. He's so talented. <laughs> yep. Anyway, but Snow says, Yeah, you're right. Snow's like, Oh, in his own way. Like, he's like unlocked something, right? Like, he's thought of something. Um, and he walks off. Like, Snow just like run, not runs off. He just kind of like, Ooh, he's got like some pep in his step and he starts walking on right and everybody's, Why, George, everybody's like something where are you going <laughs> like what are you doing <laughs> and um what the fuck's wrong with you <laughs> and we get some um some narration from vanille who says i think reigns was searching searching for a way to make us understand to understand the frustration of being a lessee a lessee bound to a focus and maybe what it meant to be human which buddy we are lessee and human <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You don't um, need to tell us that it sucks. As all of that is happening, we see something happen with, uh, I guess, the Lindsay, Lindsay form of uh, the crystal, where mm-hmm. just a, a a bunch of light just kind of starts arcing up out of the crystal, and it starts like life stream, flaking baby. away. Yeah, he's becoming pyroflies, oh, yeah, right. like life right. stream. Like he's he's just getting Thanosed away. Don't breathe this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Reminds me of the uh, the Perry Bible Fellowship comic of um there's like an astronaut in space and he's like (laughs) getting pulled into orbit and he's like no and like the other astronauts are freaking out and it just shows him entering the atmosphere and getting like burnt up and like very like fucked up thing and stuff and then there's just two kids sitting like on a hill and they look up and there's just like a little flake of the astronaut and the kid catches it on on their tongue and just goes oh the first snowfall of the season (laughs) 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 So that's the end of that scene. And Carl, you said you stopped there, right? Yeah, this I might think actually we get, be a good time to wrap up because we're. Do we want to go ahead and wrap up here? We get we get um, prompted to save here. I think there was like another okay. cutscene after this. No, there's like there's a save point after this, but that's, that's it. That's oh yeah, really yeah, yeah. This. So I think I just went to the save point. I'm like, surely after playing the game for three straight hours, <laughs> it's a long. That'll section. be where oh, we, my we, God, we yeah. stop. Yeah, I think you you guys said that there's a little bit more in this chapter, though, right? There is. I think next episode, what I think would be good is to kind of the well, how this chapter ends and how the next chapter begins. I think we could just do a whole episode on, right? I think you're right. I think you're right. I think we can do a end of this chapter, beginning of la- next chapter. It's a nice. It's a nice uh, package, I think, because yeah. there's a lot to talk about and unwrap just in the beginning of the next chapter because. Feels almost like a mm. post credits. Like I, I was grinning, I was grinning ear to ear, like watching some of this stuff. Nice. Like this I'm is excited. so fun. I love this. There's a very we. I don't want to say tonal shift, but like it feels almost like we're in sequel territory sometimes. Like and then the it feels like out, it's, it's, it's the sequel to it. Yeah, like it, it's, it's, it's so the weird. vibe. It just so feels weird. like and where are they now? Like it, it, like it almost is like a one month later or whatever. It's like it just has that kind of vibe to it. It, it very much does. Yeah. If you are a listener, and you, I mean, well, I, you are a listener if you're listening to this, so that would be 100% of you. Technically, you are a listener no matter what if you heard that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, if you're um, not a hater, <laughs> if you're playing along with us, uh, just FYI. So, the next episode, we're going to finish this one and begin the next chapter. The next chapter is really, really fucking long, and there are side quests to be done. So, we've been discussing. It's a whole other game. It's a whole different game. So we've been discussing how to do it, and I think we're just going to run around and just partake of every side quest we can get our hands on and just really enjoy the splendor of FF13 that it opens up upon us. Curse gave us each 20 bucks and just told <laughs> us to meet back here. He said, and- get lost, don't come back for as long as it takes me to have sex with my wife. Um, <laughs> wife? My- wife, <laughs> yeah, my wife. Um it's going to be real wild, so just just go nuts. Go nuts out there. Have fun. I'm not going to tell you where, because uh, we'll save that for next time. But I wonder where it good. could be. Where could it be? We could be anywhere on Cocoon. Yeah. <laughs> Xanarchan. We're finally going to Eden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I, 
once again, not going to say anything because no spoilers. But I cannot fucking wait until you all see Eden and specifically what is happening when we go back to Eden. Because what the fuck were they thinking? I don't know, but it's awesome. <laughs> it's great. Exciting times ahead. I, they will never make another Final Fantasy 13. Let me just say that right now. <laughs> they will never make another game like Final Fantasy 13. It cannot happen. They'll never let us show that one again. <laughs> anyway, is that all for this section, too? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, we come up to a nice uh, safe point before an elevator, which we're, we love elevators here. Love those things. And yeah, I think that's about it, right? Yeah. Does you all have anything else to say about it? I'm reading through his data log now because I pulled that up right away just to see if it gave a little more insight on anything since a lot of questions got raised by that. Yeah. I don't think it, I think it says just everything that we already know, which is to be expected. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't think it, it it doesn't give any more insight about like what his true focus was, like what actually kicked off the crystal shit. But well, how about that? Well, ain't that some shit? Well, Alex. Would you like to put us through a giant training regimen to turn us into the ultimate cocoon-destroying weapons? <laughs> I would be honored. Destined on this path, regardless. <laughs> Thank you, Masashi Uzi, for the game music, as always. Our listeners can leave us a review or rate us on iTunes and Spotify and wherever you can buy podcasts. You can call <laughs> us or text us at 530-MATERIA, and you can find us at every FNFF on Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube. Why don't you text us at uh, 530 Materia? Why don't you do that? Why don't you call your mom? Why don't you leave a five-star review? <laughs> think resistance is hard? Try calling your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, not Seath, but podcasters all the same. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed.